Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geeks show. This is episode number 381 being recorded on Friday, May 31st, 2024. Let's do this, gentlemen. Let's I am excited, even though we're not streaming to LinkedIn. I apologize for that. We'll figure it out for next time. Mr. Joe Hozempa is here with us. Joe, what's going on, my friend? How's it going? I'm hey, excited man, to be here. Good. Yeah. You know you got a Yankees hat on. Uh, <laughs> you were supposed to wear a Red Sox hat, Jason. Ah, sorry, sorry. I went, Jason I went, Albuquerque. I went Tom Brady. In Jason Albuquerque is here with us. Jason, oh, welcome I back to the, so sad the fully not, I revived, was, I know. revamped. I'm so happy to be here, but I'm so sad I missed the first reboot show. No, you're fine. You're fine. Because you know why? The first sad. two shows is like it figuring it out. You know what I'm I, saying? I, I honestly... Like, refiguring yeah, it out. I feel you. I feel you. But I was paying attention on YouTube, and I sent you guys yeah. a couple of messages. Yes, so I, I saw that. I missed you guys, but... Uh, but it's good to have you here in, in oh studio, God. man. I miss yeah. it. I miss it. It is great to be Yeah. I so we are streaming on YouTube, so uh, yeah, if yeah. you're listening to the recording, uh, you can go to the Stogie Geeks uh, website and, YouTube or, and or YouTube channel, and you can tune in live every other Friday. I will try and put uh, more of a schedule out there for when we're doing it, but we're doing it every other Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think is is a great. And time. I plan to be here. Uh, remotely, we've got Mr. Jim McMurray, whiskey hacker himself. Yay! Jim, super excited welcome to, to be the here. show. Yeah, dude, it's good to have you. It's good to see you. And I had to find um, a hat because you know you guys were wearing hats, so I had to. Yeah, we had to wear it. We had to wear it. Yeah. I broke up my Stogie Geek <laughs> shirt, and then I realized it's bright white, and so on camera, <laughs> it's going to be really bright. <laughs> I was just gonna. I, I I took a look over and I said, "Wow, look at the threads." We need to. Today. We need to do some more. I don't do, know if you can do. see it on camera, we but do. there's the. There we go. Yeah. Stogie Geeks logo nice. embroidered on here. We need here, to put it like in the we, middle, we, well, like down here. <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> that's that's gonna be Stogie. Guts. You know what we need to do? You know what we need to do? We need to make, get new ones of these, and we need to make them black. Yes, 100%. <laughs> or blue or some other 100%. color that looks nice on camera. Slimming, slimming. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I was thinking with, with white. Um, so I, I will take that as an action item and get some new Stogie Geeks. Um, now I can't remember what these shirts are called. What are these called? There's a name. Guayavera. Thank Guayavera. you. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> you know, I just, all, I did was, all I did was repeat what you said. So. <laughs> you, need, uh, you need to look at me. <laughs> that's right. Was. I would like to thank our sponsor, ThreatHunter.ai. Jim, I, you have like an announcement. You've got. Are you ready to make that announcement? You've got like a new a new service. Are you? Uh, uh, do you want to talk about that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so stay tuned for. for that. Okay, maybe next time we'll talk next about the time, new service. Two time. weeks. Okay. Uh, so Jim, just give us a, a recap. What What do you do at ThreatHunter.ai, and uh, how are things going? Things are going really great. Um, here's what we do. We find bad things that are occurring in your network 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and, 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 you know, we care about you. That's, that's the crux of it. We Mm. care about you. Um, we, we built up over the past 17 years, a great big, huge ML system that also has some AI and thrown in. And uh, but we primarily use humans uh, to go and mm. find those bad things that are occurring, find them in real time and um, uh, stop them and mitigate them from from doing bad things in your network. Much like um, uh, you heard what happened this week with Snowflake. No, what happened with Snowflake? I didn't actually see that. OK, so you know what Snowflake is? Yeah, big, some like cloud company or something, right? A big, huge cloud mm-hmm. company does lots of uh, data analytics, AI. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. They were breached, and one of the largest banks, uh, I can never pronounce it, Santander. 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 Yes. Yeah, it's Spanish. 30 million yeah. customers have been breached. All their credit card numbers, all their private mm-hmm. information. And then on top of that, Ticketmaster I uses know. them as well. They've been breached. Right, um, and they were they were up over six hundred million. Yeah, uh, records. I believe, now that's right? interesting because I closed out my Santander account, but the records could very well still be there. Oh, they're still I'm not there. sure how. Sure. Yeah, but I knew because like you can go back to the bank and pull and pull your right. statements up to a certain amount of time, um, and I'm not sure if they change how they store those if you're no longer a customer or not. But right, and and they just released Snowflake just released the indicators of compromise. They're still trying to figure out how they got in to begin with. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I don't even know. 
craziness. It's crazy. Cra it really Lots is. Lots going down. Lots going down. Oh, I don't. I don't have drinks yet, but I'll I'll take care of that. But let's talk about what um, we've been smoking, and then for our in studio host, I have a little gift uh, that oh. came from uh, that. I actually, uh, Jim, I got to send you some <laughs> some things because we get samples still here on the show. So if you're listening and you work for a cigar manufacturer, we are back. Uh, so tell all your friends, tell all your cigar representatives if you'd like to send us samples. We will start incorporating those on the show, mm -hmm. especially the ones that we really like. So I guess I'll, while I'm on that, I got a CEO Flathead 860. Mm -hmm. Now, what's amazing about this is that this is a cigar, and like you guys could probably look at the cigar and go, Paul, that's really not in your wheelhouse, right? Like, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to date. This cigar is, is massive. It's, I don't know what the, the – it's obviously a 60 ring. It's uh, box-pressed. It's probably wow. an eight or nine by sixty. Wow! Uh, it, it's and it's massive, and it has some strength to it, right? So, like That's the right. first two thirds are uh, medium bodied, uh, good flavors. Like you get a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of chocolatiness in those first two thirds, and then the final third really kicks in with what to me tastes like Nicaraguan tobacco that kind of just amps up. It, similar flavors, but just amped up in strength <coughs> in the final third. So make sure you eat a good meal before you smoke <laughs> these. Unlike I did when I smoked the first one, and then I'll start and turn green. <laughs> Is that the like end. a two-hour cigar right there? Oh my! It's it, maybe three. I oh, smoked okay. one, so I've smoked several of them, and I smoked one at a cookout last Saturday at my neighbor's house, and I, I, I it was like the almost like the whole cookout. <laughs> I was wow. still smoking. Like we were leaving, and it was down to like the nub, and it was still in my hand because I didn't have an ashtray to put it out in. <laughs> wow! And that was like ten o'clock at night, and I had to have lit it up. It's six thirty, seven o'clock. So yeah, uh, it's massive. So I have ones for Joe and Jason. Awesome! Thank Enjoy you. your CAO Flathead uh, eight sixty. Look at this bad boy from the fine folks over uh, at uh, CAO and uh, G General. Is it general? Now, see, we got to do an episode where we talk about who owns what who owns today what these days. in, in so cigars because I get, I get really confused. But I believe those samples came from General. I think CAO was owned by General. Is that, is that true? I got to validate that on the I internet. There's so. people yelling at me. Uh, look that up quick. But I think you guys are really going to like that cigar. Um, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's fabulous. Um, so. Uh, what what are we smoking? So I went into the time machine back to when we talked about the Castagli cigar, the Cipher three one three three one one, and I bought a bunch of those after the show, and I actually broke out the Enigma. It comes in this beautiful coffee. Oh yeah, are those good? Uh, some of those are on sale right now. They're still kind of pricey, yeah, but they're they on sale. They are. I think this one's sixty fifty a cigar. This one's fifty a cigar. There yeah. are some that are sixty. Small Batch had those, I, and mm -hmm. we're not sponsored by Small Batch. I know Jim, you know the guys over at Small. Batch. I just I love them as a company. They're yep. one of the, the places that I order from regularly, and they've got some of those on closeout. Of course, now that I've said that on the show. People are going to go, oh, well, the still geeks think it's good, <laughs> and it's on sale, and they're going to be gone. <laughs> so I just, if I don't yeah, order right. it right after the show, I'm, I'm right, screwed. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you that I, I rested them since the show. I haven't smoked yeah, them yet. So it was, yeah. So I will tell you today. Awesome. Yeah. Joe, what are you smoking? I'm, I'm smoking something weird, but I'm kind of digging it. It's uh, Simone Rojas. Mm. So, uh, you know, I've been trying to get some, like, you know, you, some cigars that you can't find on the internet and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, uh, they're available uh, at Atlantic Cigar. Uh, you could pick them up. You can, it's, um, you know, the binder is Dominican, the filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. It's a Robusto size, so mm -hmm. it's pretty tasty. It's, it's ranked medium to full. It's right there. Yeah. Got a little spicy note, uh, you know. I've been into that and some of the stuff by the Rodriguez over in uh, Key West, mm. Florida, mm. stuff like that. So I've just been, been kind of knocking around. And then I'm going to back that up by a Tatuaje Mexican experiment. Nice. I can't get off this there stick. I don't know what it, I, I, that's where, a good stick. I that's really a love this stick. stick. That's a good so stick. I'm kind of just been knocking. That, that's yep. kind of like my stick of the week. Yep. yep. I always have like a stick of the week where yep. I, I keep going back to. And this week it just happens to be that. So. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Very good. 
have you um have you tried the El Pulpos yet? The AJ Fernandez El Pulpos? No. Really good stick here. Take it. No. no yeah, I, you can you can have it. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really good line that that came out of AJ. Now here we are hand, right. handing each other sticks, and poor <laughs> Jim is <laughs> uh, sitting all the way in California <laughs> going, oh, look, damn. It's like, this, it's like this. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the virtual handoff. Oh. But it's I'm just saying you're the tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So, so what awesome. am I smoking? Yeah, oh, well, I'm glad you asked. Yes, I know. I was just, I was <laughs> now, I was, I was distracted because I have a cigar, I have whiskey, and ADHD. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so to start off with, of course, it's a Davidoff um, uh, Anniversario Short Perfecto. Um, it's a great accompaniment to a cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, since it is still morning here. And I won't be drinking alcohol today. Uh, this is a great, great starter. And then I'm going to go to a... Uh, but hold on. I just want to go back. You hit the nail on the head. The Anniversario Short perfect, Perfecto from Davidoff has to be top three cigars to have with coffee in the morning. Yeah. Hands down. I agree. Hands down. It is, it is fabulous. And then I'm going to move over to uh, a Lampert Original Ocean Breeze. Nice. nice. Very, very nice. And then... I haven't had a lot of the, the Lampert stuff. And I've seen those, too. They're good sticks. Yeah. And then I'm going to shift over to um, a Drew Estate Miami. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I haven't had that one yet, either. If I did, it was... When did those come out? The Miami uh, ones. The Drew Estate ones? I think, off the top of my head. The, but... um, like, two years ago? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm. Awesome. Oh, so I'm smoking. Hey, Jim, thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm smoking <laughs> an Arturo Fuente 858 Rosado. Ooh. Ooh. I yeah. happened uh, to score some of these. Nice. Uh, a shout out to uh, Jana at the uh, Humidor. Uh, and I had some of these kicking around that I probably had, you know, like the five or eight kicking around in my humidor. And like every once in a while I would go in and smoke them because I don't think you should age these for all that long. Um, so I was going there and smoking them. I'm like, man, I'm going to – I had like like three left or four yep. left or whatever. And I'm like, I don't want to smoke them. And then I just got lucky, right place, right time, um, and I picked up a whole box. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you have stash. this is the first one from uh, that box. This, uh, you know, Rosado wrapper is super rare. Um, and in fact, I smoked a cigar this week that also had that wrapper that I'll talk about uh, in a little while. But um, yeah, these are these are awesome. These are awesome with coffee. These are awesome with whiskey. Um, it's just got a great medium. But it's very we use that term Cuban esque. I think to describe those medium bodied, medium strength cigars that have a lot of flavor. Yeah. Um, so this one has more of a, a cedar uh, kind of a aroma to it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know more so than that uh, the CAO right would did not have like that cedar. This is a very different right. uh, profile. But uh, these are these are awesome, super rare. Um, if you can get your hands on one, don't pay too much. Don't overpay. <laughs> Uh, these uh, MSRP on these are like ten dollars and sixty cents. I think was what the the price tag was on the box. So don't so that, that means go crazy in California. Yeah, so in California, <laughs> probably at thirty five dollars, right? So don't pay more than MSRP wherever that is. Happens to be where you live, based on taxes, right? That's why your cigars are so much more expensive, right, Jim? Correct. Goes good with a mojito uh, in the middle yeah. of Casa Fuente, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get that, mojitos. That brings up a good time. question. Paul, mm. how do you pair a cigar with a whiskey? Um, so I take a really uh, big ice cube, and then I pour <laughs> yeah. whiskey into a glass where the ice cube is. Um, and this whiskey, happened, this is my favorite. Um, this is the Elijah Craig that has been uh, decanted with the stave. For any given number of days, right? I try and let it chill out for 24 hours before I, I break it. I give that stave at least 24 hours, preferably 48 before you break into it. Um, and I've tried this with several different whiskeys, and Lodge Craig happens to be the same. 
Um, with whiskey, I try and go like medium bodied to all, to all the way up to full. Right? I try not to pair my, usually I don't pair Connecticut's with whiskey or your lighter cigars. Lighter sure. cigars, I find pair very well with beer. Now, not all beers, but like a lighter, lighter in color, lighter in body beer, yep. Yep. I think pairs uh, very well with a, a lighter that you're Davidoff uh, that you're smoking mm-hmm. right now, Jim, right? Like a, a really light IPA or Pilsner or lager would go really well with yeah. that, with that See, cigar. See, I, like, I like coffee drinks. Like coffee martini. Yes. Something coffee those, martini would be, would be right? great. But like Jim asked specifically, oh, sure, 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 now sure. we're getting yeah, off track. No, 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 no. Yeah, you come well, back and now you, you sidetrack. I'm Listen, just kidding. You, you I'm just kidding. You brought I'm, coffee. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's how I do the pairings, Jim. Uh, again, medium to full with, with the whiskey. That's how I would do it. Yeah. I guess we can get into nuances there. There, there are, right? So, so yeah. for me, usually I'll do a medium body cigar with a more peaty whiskey, like a peaty scotch. I kind of do the opposite, right? And if I have, if I have a stronger cigar, like a spicier mm. cigar, I go lighter on the whiskey. Right. I kind of do the, the, the opposite side of the, you know what I mean? Sure. Well, Cause I don't want that double hard flavor, like the strong flavor on both sides. Mm. So I almost look for the balance. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm just making <laughs> audio adjustments. So talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I try and um, uh, not purposely pair a cigar with what I'm drinking. I know it's, that's counterintuitive, mm. but but I want to taste those two different things. One may overpower the other for a moment, but but yes. I still get back that that taste. You know, so. So if I pair, let's say, um, the ocean an ocean breeze, you know, a, a Lampert, something very light, um, with, you know, a um, hundred and twenty proof plus bourbon, you know, I, yes, that bourbon is going to be a, a little overpowering uh, to the cigar, but just for a moment or two, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't. I don't add. Ice cubes to my. Uh, I know you're not you're not a uh, a cube guy. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a cube guy I, unless it's a cocktail. Unless unless we're adding Mountain Dew, then I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Then it's okay. Um, but I, I like the experiment. My, you know, you mentioned you guys mentioned uh, um, uh, a really heavy peat uh, scotch. Mm-hmm. I love doing the same thing. I, I love yeah. doing the counterintuitive thing, you know. Yeah. Um, because sometimes you want to where I naturally go, Jim. Like I naturally go because I look at it, I'm like, "Ooh, that's a strong cigar." Right. Do I really want a strong peaty whiskey? Yeah, probably not. Like it's just natural to me, where I won't like my my brain won't go to that section of where I have my whiskey. I'll go move over a little bit, you know, to the to the whiskeys that aren't as strong. So yeah, I think it's just it's my palate and, and preference. But I, I love the fact that you experiment. So maybe one day I will try that and just be like, you want to know what? Let me get out of my comfort zone and do a really, really peppery cigar with a peaty whiskey and see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You have, to, you have to experience the pairings because you never know until you try it. Right. And uh, it's it funny. CAO actually had sent us a bunch of cigars and beer. I believe it came as one package. And they shipped us cigars and beer. How they pulled that off, I, I don't know. Nice. Yeah, and if, if they're going to get in trouble for that, it, it just it wasn't CAO when we bought <laughs> the beers because I don't want them to get in trouble. It because, was but FAO. We'll, yeah, so yeah. they <laughs> we'll just say I bought the beers and they said you right. got to pair this cigar with this beer, and I was like I don't know, and that's how I figured out that the lighter Connecticut's went really well with the lighter beers. Mm-hmm. I would have never tried that until they suggested it. So Drew did a. Uh, Drew Estate did a, a barbecue book for summer that was themed as well. And it, co- it appeared there and it really? gave you, yeah, and it gave you a, um, it gave you a layout. Like if you're having this steak, here's the Drew cigar that'll go with this. And by the way, these are our beverage selections. Mm. And, and, and they even did like alcoholic, non-alcoholic. No kidding. Uh, I think Camacho did one back in 2019 as well. So do, um, do you know what I'm super excited for? What's that? I bought tickets to Bond Smoker. 
Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. In yeah. August. Yeah, yeah. So I bought a VIP ticket to go to Barn Smoker. Yeah, yeah. So that's Where's Barn cool. Smoker? In Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, the tobacco okay. fields of Connecticut. Nice. And it's Drew Estate. And they bring you in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they take you through the fields, and you get a bunch of swag, a bunch of sticks. Do you want to use my fanny pack for your cigars? I have one. Do you? Yeah, Yeah. it's right there. If you, yeah. if you can wear your satchel, because that's that's the crew. The sa- the, it's it's the what crew. they do. Dude. They wear satchels. They have the the whole really ensemble, dude. <laughs> <What>? whole ensemble. <laughs> you know? I'll have to get me a satchel. <laughs> you, you already got the flat brim hat, so you're yeah. good. You know, <laughs> you'll fit in. It, it's it. a supposedly it's a super cool time. Uh, that's so. what I've, that's what I've heard. So yeah. I, I went and I invested in that. And you learn a lot too, because they take you through the fields, right? And right. they do like little seminars and mm-hmm. stuff like that too. So it breaks it down, so you can kind of like like nerd out on like tobacco process and stuff awesome. yeah i'm super excited mm. and been? do you get your own mm. satchel mm. afterwards uh, I, oh yeah well jewish state they sent satchels at one time i yeah, think i have a drew state they? satchel Maybe. i heard you get a lot of swag like a mm. ton of oh swag. yeah totally oh yeah drew drew estate and alec bradley were like the the best swag companies mm. for decades oh god yeah, yeah. we have an, an ashtray with a stand i i saved it oh yeah <laughs> so i saved really? it because the, the downstairs is closing as of like july 1st yep so like whatever was downstairs we got about a thousand square feet downstairs so larry and i came in uh last saturday to clean up and we did some cleanup and i found the there was we were gonna do stogie geeks downstairs in the downstairs set Mm. um but then you know pandemic hit and no one was doing in-person stuff right and that kind of killed that whole thing so now we have the upstairs unit uh that we're renting i'll spare you all the details but this is what we're going to call the Hacker Syndicate Studios, where we're going to do Stogie Geeks um, in, in a bunch of other things, nice. uh, podcast live streams, right? So when I was down there cleaning out the old Stogie Geek set, I retrieved a couple of items. There, uh, back there, there's the LFD beer stein that came filled with cigars. Ooh. Those yep, scores yep. were awesome. I don't think I have. I think I smoked every single one of those because they were so yeah, awesome. Yeah. I, I actually stored those in the humidor that I have next door to the cigar lounge, and I found them, and then we, we just smoked every single one of them. Um, but I also found the red stand. It's, this me- it's over there somewhere in the darkness <laughs> on the other side, <laughs> but there's the red stand that came with an ashtray, and the ashtray's got to be... It's got to be around here somewhere. Now, after the show, remind me, because yeah. I want to find it. I yeah. want to make sure we have it. And there's an ashtray that sits on this like massive stand. Yeah. And so I'm going to try and work that in. I haven't worked in right. some things into the set. Like behind you guys also, I was at a salvage yard <laughs> last week with my son because my son's into welding. And so Which is so awesome. Yeah, it's way. awesome. And I've seen some of the videos. So awesome. You know the, the scrap yard? It looks like a big, it's a big scorpion on Route 3 yes, in Exeter. Exeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. a scrap yard. Yep. And so I went in there and I saw uh, a payphone receptacle. Mm. And I took a picture of it. And then the lady starts yelling at me, like, don't take pictures of it and post them on social media. And then she said something, what? and I didn't know what. Yeah, I couldn't hear what she said after that. She might have said because people come back and steal it, oh. uh, perhaps, uh, oh. would be the, the reasoning behind that, which <laughs> yeah. obviously she's speaking from experience. So I was like, you know what? I, I was thinking about buying it, but I'm just going to buy it now. <laughs> so I bought a, <laughs> nice. I bought a, a pay phone. Uh, receptacle. It's over there in the uh, in the dark again in the darkness on the other side, and so we're going to put a payphone receptacle, and then we may even try and get an actual payphone uh, to go in it. Nice, so, yeah, very cool. Homage to our our hacking roots. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I broke down and I got the spray paint spray paint can lighter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, did you, you buy one? one here? Yeah, yeah we have one, one here. Yeah. Yeah. There's one floating around if you was, dig around here. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm still digging my AliExpress lighter. Yeah. That I got for like. Oh, yeah. What about your phone? I I haven't gone back to the phone. I included it in my webcast this week. I have a small Android purple phone. um, And now that I've done my bus pirate blog post. So if you're into hardware hacking. um, So if you're listening to the show, you're probably into cigars. But if you're also into hardware hacking, go check out Eclipsium.com, the blog. I wrote up a whole thing on the bus pirate five. And that took a long time. Um, I was pulling spy flag. There's actually a motherboard behind me that's old. That's a set decoration and ha- had a spy flash chip on a dip connector. Whoa. And a dip connector just raises it up off yep. the motherboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can just pull it out with your fingers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ooh, I spy need flash chip. I need that. <laughs> so, yeah, I <laughs> so I finished awesome. that. Then after I that, I will, I'm going to uh, now hopefully on the short list is for me to do some more Android 
uh, stuff with those. Uh, I bought a couple of phones from AliExpress. So are but, you going to test whether or not um, it can be used to smuggle into a, a jail or not? Uh, no. I am. I know where you're going with that, and I am not going to test that. Where are you going to hide it? <laughs> yeah, not going there. Not well, I'm, I'm doing it. Any volunteers? Negative, yeah. Negative Ghost Rider. Yes. So, so here's a question. This is something I want to bring up. Father's Day is coming up soon. Mm. Yes. And my wife has been asking. Don't order from AliExpress because they'll never come in in time. <laughs> not never, like, never not coming in. in in time. But in, in you know, in the cigar world. You know, my wife has been asking me, what do you want for Father's Day? I don't want to buy you crap. I don't want to buy you garbage. I want, you, I want to buy you things you actually want. Cigars. Cigar. So, smoke. so I was going to say, what's your top five that you, yeah. know, that box you would of, want? Box of Davidoff, box of Padron, box of right? Padron Anniversary Series, yeah. uh, something special. I, I usually ask my wife for a box of Davidoff. Do you? <laughs> Cigars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Any, any, like, I don't know, lighters, cutters, anything like that that you guys would be looking at? You know, what, what, what? raised my eyebrow was I started searching for really good Father's Day gifts and I found an ST DuPont lighter mm. where um, they did a collab with this guy Frank Muller who mm-hmm. is a watch designer and the lighter is $65,000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> $65,000. It, it's, it's absolutely insane. But it, it's, it's called the Master Lighter um, and it was built again by this master watchmaker and ST DuPont it's got, um, it's got a clear um, uh, window on each side, and the, the watches, it's got actually watch integrated into the lighter, and the hands are on both sides of the lighter, which is kind of cool, but, um, but I don't know if it's worth 60 And I would probably dollars. lose it within the first week exactly of owning it. Exactly it, <laughs> right? I would leave it behind somewhere is what I would do. <laughs> so I've got, <clears throat> I've got the exact opposite lighter. Do you? Exact opposite. I put the link in the, the live streaming mm-hmm. um, chat uh, on YouTube, and I'll put it in the show notes as well <laughs> for this episode and in the blog post. And it comes from AliExpress. It's advertised as a kitchen, barbecue, cigar, big jet flame, fire torch, outdoor, powerful flame camping gun lighter, man's tools without butane gas. <laughs> Woo! That's the title. <laughs> If that's not the most AliExpress title ever, <laughs> I don't know what is. What? Oh, my God. That's great. <clears throat> right now, I'm looking at it, and the price says it's $5.33. All right. So when I ordered mine, because there's different colors and options, mm-hmm. I think I did a different one, and it ended up being uh, $6.90, and then plus shipping, it was $15.04. Uh, so I probably should have... Looked into the shipping or ordered more than one. You might, sometimes you can kind of score a, a discount on shipping. I mean, you should have ordered at least three for us, right? Well, this says uh, five plus pieces. You get an extra fifteen percent off, well, so that can help offset some of the, um, the some of the cost costs of shipping. Yeah. yeah. Now we can go straight down the middle, and Elon Musk and SpaceX actually built a lighter. Oh, Jim uh, has it. Jim has one. Have no it. way. Yeah, yeah, have Jim, do you have yeah, it? He sure Get on it. Yeah, Jim has yeah, one. Yeah. Now it's like three hundred dollars. That's that's yeah. like middle, you know middle of the road. But Jim has a full yeah, five, 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 five bucks. Know where right. I put it. See? Yeah. Now it's already all gone. Oh, here it is. This is why you he should not own it. a sixty. Yeah. You should not own a sixty-five thousand dollars letter. <laughs> you would lose it for sure. Oh, that's big. And how do you lose that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so do you like it, Jim? <clears throat> I do. Or is it, is it, is it a showpiece? No, it's, it's actually a very good lighter. Yeah? Yeah. I think if you ask my wife that, she would say I'm just a showpiece. Just showpiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So is that what MSRP was? 300 bucks? About 300 bucks? It was a gift. Oh, was, this one was a gift. We, gotcha. we got a few of them as gifts. Oh, nice. Very nice. So anyway, back to my AliExpress, mm-hmm. $5.33 plus shipping. It's an awesome lighter. I actually bought it for my oldest son who was doing uh, welding, and like he would steal my cigar lighters and heat stuff up with it. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, stop doing that. I'm going to order you a cheap one from AliExpress. And he came in, and it was too nice to give to him. So I gave him <laughs> one of my old ones, and I kept this one on my desk. I'm like, this lighter is freaking awesome. I love it. It I holds love it. fluid great. Uh, it's, you know, it's got good um, 
what would you call that? Efficiency with yep. with butane? Like it doesn't yep. you don't have to fill it every every single day. Um, and and there's bunches of different colors. They've got carbon fiber, uh, and they all kind of vary slightly in in price. Mm-hmm. Actually, now that I'm clicking through, not by much. They all start out at around they're about six dollars uh, each, plus shipping. And like I said, Father said, like this says now estimated delivery on August 9th. Like yeah. it took a while to come yeah, in because yeah. shipping directly from China. Well, you can do it like my wife does every once in a while. Print it out and put it in a card and say, this is coming yeah, for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. You can do that. <laughs> yeah. More and the, uh, apparently I have eight other things in, in my cart, nice. um, which also includes some other lighters. So what I'll do is I'll order that stuff. It'll come in. Then I'll give you my, my review on it. And if it's yeah. good, I'll put the link uh, in, in the show notes. And I'll try and keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, on the show because uh, I think it's a lot of fun. And I'm usually putting together some kind of AliExpress order for electronics sure. <clears throat> um, and, and cigar stuff. So, yeah. Well, I put the link to the $65,000 so, so lighter in the chat. Who gets more packages at your house, <laughs> Paul? You or your wife? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who opens them? No, who gets more packages delivered? You uh, or your wife? It varies. I don't know. You what did the wives get stuff from Amazon? Oh my like, god! All every, day long. Is that so? That's like one hundred percent true. So that's so, not just a trope on no, like TikTok or the, whatever, the, right? The, the running conversation in my house is, you can talk to me, honey, as soon as my cigar deliveries are more than your Amazon deliveries. Right. Until then, hands off. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I haven't exceeded those yet because literally every single day, Amazon or FedEx is dropping something off. Now, do it, your kids it, open those? <clears throat> no, if it's got my name or my wife's name on it, my kids don't know. Yeah, I try and enforce that rule. Yeah, and my oldest one happen. is... They get, they, they get put on the dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> what I got to start doing is when it's it. something for my son, put his name on mm-hmm. it um, so that he can... open Because he's always... I, he does woodworking yeah, and yeah. welding, and he doesn't have a credit card. Right. I need to get him... There's ways to get kids a credit they card. Do. Yeah, they do. Venmo have, cards. You can right. give him Venmo cards. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do that so he can order his own exactly. uh, stuff. Because he's always like, I need this, you know, sanding discs yep. and yep. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, Which I, re- I re- redid my Blackstone mm-hmm. at home. It, which, it sat there for a year or two and I hadn't used it. Yep. And um, my wife's like, we should keep it. Because I was going to get rid of it because I'm like, you I don't were. use it. Because oh, I have God. a million. I have, I have too many grills. I know you do. I have, you've seen the grills. Yeah, I have totally. Too many. 100%. But we moved it up top <clears throat> and we've been cooking with yeah. it. And when I re-seasoned it. I was like, I need to get rust off of metal. And I went to my oldest, and he was like, oh, gotcha. I got you, Dad. Gotcha. You need this, <laughs> and you need this. I had this awesome grind. I forget what he called it, uh, a cup wire wheel mm. that mounts on the grinding wheel. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you need to redo your Blackstone, this is the tool that you want to use. It made quick work of that. Yeah. And then I just use a, an orbital sander kind of thing. Sure. Uh, to smooth it out, and yeah. dude, it's awesome. I almost don't use my grill anymore because I, use the I, I use the Blackstone all the time. You yeah, know what I, I use I got my Blackstone, Blackstone every single weekend. Yeah, mm. for real. Yeah, you know what I got for the Blackstone? You know how they have the 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 pan on the, the little pan on the back to collect yeah. all, the, all the. Oh, you did the bucket thing. I did the bucket thing. I just ordered. Wait, it. wait, you you did a bucket? Yeah. So oh, they, yeah, yeah, they have yeah. a connector for the back that it connects in where the pan would go, and uh-huh. it has a tube that goes down to a bucket. And people DIY this this all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. There's an Amazon. Did you order like, a kit? You yeah, ordered a kit. Yeah, it's a kit on yeah. Amazon. I'll, I'll put the link how in the much chat. Was the, so how much was the kit? Like, like 20, 30 bucks, 30 bucks, maybe yeah. 25, 30 bucks. But, I mean, it's a big bucket at the bottom, so now you don't have to clean the right. that little pan every time. You know? And then when the bucket's full, do yeah. you empty it or there's you just a, buy a, a new there's bucket? There's an aluminum insert. <laughs> oh, okay. There's an aluminum insert that you just get rid of the aluminum insert. No, that's, that's yeah. nice. Because if yeah. I had a bucket that was filled with sludge from the Blackstone and it was, what, like a five-gallon bucket? Yeah, it's not that big. No, oh. no. I mean, it's, I don't know. When that filled up, I'd be like, I'm just buying Maybe a new bucket. Maybe half a gallon. <laughs> probably half a gallon. So yeah, shouldn't got, they just make like a inch. tube that goes into a hole in the ground? Well, it could. I could take, I could take the bucket off and, <laughs> you know, pipe it into the ground. <laughs> could. You have to have a spot to do it that wouldn't right, like right, right. smell or yeah. you know what I mean, right? I don't know how you how you exactly. do that. I don't yeah, know if you want that. that. You want the you, you get, want the you, liner. You the get liner. Bu- you get bugs and animals probably trying to dig oh, it yeah. up too. Yeah. yeah, you definitely want it in a, in the line. That's the best way to do mm-hmm. it. And then you just throw it out and put a new liner in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I'll put the link in there. But totally worth the investment. It, it reminds me of of doing oil changes as a teenager with my father, <laughs> and what mm. we would do with the oil. Oh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> there was a special hole in the backyard that you would dump yeah. the oil into. Yeah, and that was, that was you in, in every garage, in every municipal <laughs> yes. department. I mean, 
you know, about, about a mile away from my house, there, there was an old municipal building that got knocked down, and they were going to try to resell the land. And, they and when they did all the tests, they couldn't because all, they used to dump all the oil from because it was a mechanic shop. Right. Yes. They used to dump all the oil into the ground so they couldn't sell it. No, that, happened, that happens a lot of people that you know had a family business yeah, or a town yeah. that owned a building. And the land is so contaminated that when they do the testing on the soil, you they're like, sell it. You, you could, but then you have to treat the land, right. which sometimes would cost more than what you would sell the land for. Yep. So yep. That's, un that's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Bills of the past. I have a question. <laughs> for uh, you guys, do you know have any uh, cybersecurity folks that are into cigars that live in Minneapolis? And the reason why I'm asking is because beginning May 1st, they put a ban on smoke shops yes. where you can only smoke for 15 minute time uh -huh. limit. What? what? And then from there, and the town council passed it because it's called "quote unquote" sampling. Right. I will put that link hey. in the in there as well. Oh, that's in Look there what too. I pulled for an hour. No, that was me. Yeah. I pulled that to talk about. Tonight. Oh yeah, same, I, same I wanted page, to talk bro, about it. Page. I wanted to talk about it last. It's it's on my show notes from last episode, yep. but. Uh, we, we didn't go to script or so anything. <laughs> <laughs> so not much changed. It was on a that. test run. So let me get. Let me understand this. You can only smoke for fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. or you can yes, only sir. be yes. inside the lounge for fifteen minutes. You smoke for fifteen. Smoke for fifteen minutes. It's called "quote unquote" sampling. According to law, I posted it. Scott mm -hmm. Fischinato mm -hmm. posted it. I I am very shocked that the. <sighs> I use this in quotes. Media podcast world is not even Up like like even. You know, like even giving this a bat of an eye. I know. I know. So here, how it's written, I did post it in the chat. Um, you can go to the shop. You can purchase it. Obviously, you can get some more for cash and carry. And you have a 15-minute time limit to sample. And then if that cigar is still lit, you have to go. So you can't put it out because we all know that if you don't smoke it through, usually after 30 minutes, that's my number. It kind of gets skunked. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know some people like cut the grass, uh, light up a cigar, cut the grass, let it sit in the sun for like four hours and then relight it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I'm certainly not one of those people. But yeah, I'm wondering if, I mean, 15 minutes is like a, uh, like an El Capone or anything in tins or, or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you were to buy a five pack of Davidoff tins, it's going to last you more than 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, some of the, some of the legislation coming out, you know, just to kind of keep with the, with the, the theme, did you see what happened in, in, um, I think it was Brookline in Brookline, Massachusetts. Oh yeah. Yep. The generation, the generational tobacco ban. Yep. Yep. Where if you were born after the year 2000, it's illegal for you to buy tobacco. Yep. Illegal. And they did it in New Zealand as well. Oh yeah. Successfully. But but they rolled it back. I just got the article that they're rolling it back in New Zealand. Because, oh, yeah. Because their, um, their political climate shifted. So now they're going to plan to roll it back. But in Brookline, Massachusetts, they're saying other communities are going to start doing the same thing hmm. around Brookline. That generational, it's going to be a generational thing. Where if you were born after a certain date, it's illegal for you to buy tobacco products. Including That's... premium cigars. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. We talked about it with the New Zealand thing. Yeah, we talked about it on another show, but Brookline doubled down mm -hmm. on it. But that's just Brookline. How big is Brookline, Massachusetts? It has uh, uh, 60,000 like, people. Yeah, yeah, 60, it, it's 60, by population. Yeah. So you just go to the next town over and buy but, cigars? But what they're saying is it's going to start propagating town over town over town now because all of the surrounding communities are starting to put that legislation, same kind of legislation, in front of their local councils. That's nuts. Right? So that think about nuts. it. If it starts propagating, now you could have to go drive an hour to go buy a, a, a cigar. Or more, depending or more, on where you are. Or more where you are, yeah. Mass goes right. very far west. I mean, yep. in... About three hours. Yeah, in, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. by yeah. time-wise. Yep. But yeah. yep. you so, get out into the Berkshires, there's like yep. nothing mm -hmm. out there but like so, woods and mountains. So there's something similar that they tried to pass last year in California that said if you're born after 2006, you can never... Buy tobacco products ever in your lifetime in California. Yeah, yeah that's exactly the same. Like lifetime. But, but it, at the last moment, it got shelved. But it, mm. it did pass the state assembly. Wow. So it just it just shows you some of the legislation that's going out there and how and how they're treating premium cigars just like any other product. 
like cigarettes yeah. and vapes and those type of things. And they're just getting all lumped in. Which is, I just which I, I don't I think understand that. Like, but it, make the minimum age 18, 21, mm-hmm. whatever. I don't understand the if you're born after 2000, it doesn't matter, right? Because, like, my nephew loves cigars. Yep. And he's 21. Right. And so, like, why, why can't he? I don't get it. Why can't he go in a store and buy cigars? Agreed. It's, 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 it's the wrong way to, again, we get this I mean, feel-good legislation, like, oh, we passed a law. How do you ban anything based on your generation, though? I would think, I would think, I would think there's, you know, constitutional law that would protect us from those type of things. I mean, they're not supposed to buy vapes, but if you go into any middle school or high school, oh, yeah. right. they're, 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 they're huge. <laughs> they're they're there. Right. right. I'm sure if we had a, a constitutional attorney, they could challenge this. Mm. If somebody really wanted to pick this up and challenge it. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're literally pinpointing a generation of people now. I just, yeah. Constitutionally, I don't think that's, that's right. Well, yeah, I think that's you're right. Gonna, I think yeah. there, there is something like you're not allowed. Uh, you can't. You can't. The law has to be generalized. It can't. It can't yes. focus on one sect of people. Right, and that's well, a discrimination yeah. against anybody right. born after the year two thousand. <laughs> Rhode Island got in that trouble with the traffic cameras. Oh yeah, yeah. because they you can't just enforce. You right. can't enforce something just on that's trucks. Right. You have to that's enforce right. it on all traffic. Yeah. So the law was for any commercial trucks, like eighteen wheelers, those mm-hmm. type of things. They were the only ones who have to pay tolls. And then the trucking association fought it. And said, no, you're discriminating against truckers and the trucking industry. Either do it for everyone, right, or do it for no one. Right. And they won. They beat that out. So this is similar, where you're discriminating against a generation. I think it speaks to liberty, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that fall under In- liberty? Individual freedom, liberty. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, you used to be able to buy cigars or tobacco at 18. You, that's when you went to war if you enlisted, or yeah. that's when you went into combat. Mm-hmm. And then now you're 21. So and now it's and now if you walk yeah. into a Scott shop in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, it's got to be 21. And it's like, which is crazy. Wait a minute, the, you just came back from right. a, a deployment, dude. I was talking <laughs> to a fellow Marine. Yeah, and he casually he was like, "Oh yeah, I was in Fallujah in Ramadi." And mm-hmm. I'm like, "Why does that sound familiar?" <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, there was like a book or a movie, right?" And then. Then I thought about more. It was like in the car ride home, but like my wife and son were in there. I'm like, oh, I'm like, no, it was extreme ownership mm-hmm. by Jocko. Yep. Oh yeah, that yep. chronicled the Navy SEAL teams yep. in Ramadi, which was yeah. in modern history. I forget how they measured it, but it was like the most combat intensive battle: bullets flown, lives yeah, lost, yeah. injured, ton of close uh, quarter injured. combat. It was close quarter combat. Yeah. It was banging. He's like, yeah, it was. Banging down doors. down doors. I'm like, yeah, 100%. No, dude, I, there's a yeah, story that, yeah. and then I was like, oh, that actually shaped a lot of my uh, lessons in leadership, yep. running a business, was yeah. actually from that book, book. Yeah. but also insights as to what the troops went through mm-hmm. that were stationed in that area, mm-hmm. which was absolutely frightening. Right. I'm like, dude, you're lucky to be standing here Seriously. next One, to me 100%. right now. Yeah. now. Now tell that 19, 20-year-old you can't buy a cigar. Yeah, you can go have bullets like... <laughs> I mean, if, you on, were in Ramadi, if you were in Ramadi, the way I understand it, like it was you were in active combat. Like 100%. there was there was you were being shot at. You were you were going to be shot at. Absolutely. You were actually being shot at. Being like shot you at. if you left the building, they have sto- Jocko tells a story like yeah. if you left the building, it's like there was bullets whizzing mm-hmm. whizzing past. Yeah. Crazy. Not, not to mention, you know, IEDs all over the oh, place. Oh, absolutely. Planted. Yep. Right. So yeah. Insane. Like, it just made me think of that with the yeah, you, you can't go have a, a cigar, but you, but can, you go, can go take a bullet for your country, right? That's insane. I mean, you know that's been my I know it's my story from way back. So, Ugh. but know. also on a more positive note, if you go read Jocko's book, it's highly, highly recommended. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the best, I think, leadership. It, it's where uh, I read the book years ago, and I still mm-hmm. I take back. The total ownership, yep. right? Like, if you're in a leadership yep, yep. position, doesn't yeah. matter what happened, you yeah. got to own it own 100%. It. And the other lesson was prioritize and execute. Exactly. Like, the only way you got through so stressful situations mm-hmm. is, and even to this day, when there's a lot of stuff going on, and again, I'm not on a battlefield, but taking those lessons from when your life is at risk on in the highest pressure situations and the most danger, and translating that to, well, now I'm in a business situation, sure. like, there's the 
like stress yep. of yep. a certain kind of conflict, I'm like relax, prioritize, and execute. What execute, would I, what would I do? Execute what would I do? the plan though. Right? Yes. that's a big that's a big deal. We could have a plan. It's, it's planning, right? You got to be able to execute the plan. Right. In order to execute the plan, you have to practice the plan. Yes. Right? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I don't know how we relate that to cigars. Like if you're running low on uh, <laughs> distilled water or cigars, like you got to have a plan and you got to prioritize <laughs> and execute uh, to make sure you have a good supply of cigars. I always find that having a nice cigar and a nice glass of bourbon uh, helps me plan and prioritize at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm. You know, yep. and, and, and Jocko is right. You know, Everything can be solved by planning and prioritizing. Yep. Everything. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. Sometimes you just have to take a step back and right. run through the plan, right? Build out that plan. And that's, that's your downtime, right? You grab, you grab a nice cigar, you grab some, some bourbon or, or whiskey, and you sit down and you just kind of sit back and think about things. And take a step back from everything and bring it into perspective and then start building out that plan in your head, right? Those, those are some of the best planning times ever. Some of the best, best planning times I've I didn't, had. I didn't have a plan for if LinkedIn didn't work. I'll be, I'll be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. Well, no, you're, uh, I made up one on the fly, and I, just, I put it out to Twitter, yeah. and I made a post on LinkedIn that linked to our YouTube hmm? uh, live stream. So, yeah. And we'll continue to figure it, was figure it out. Plan. So like, if you're listening to the show, again, every uh, other Friday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, is, is when we do the show. And so I'll get better at uh, advertising and uh, bludgeoning LinkedIn to work. So we're going to try and uh, have some streaming outlets. But YouTube seems to be more reliable right now. Yep. So, so where, where's your top three places to plan and prioritize? Mm, mm. The Cigar Lounge. Ooh. Okay. Because it's also a social setting as right. well when you go to the cigar lounge and it's oftentimes like I feel like you could pay a professional to talk to or you could just have a membership to a cigar lounge or two and you can sit around yep. and you listen to other people and then you, you share and you talk with people. And yeah. so I think for prioritizing and planning, it certainly I think gets together people from various backgrounds that you have this commonality mm -hmm. with cigars and you, you can always start up a conversation about cigars and then it usually sure. goes into something yeah. else. Yeah, I have to... Uh, it's hard to replicate in life. I had dinner with Todd, our friend Todd last, yeah. last nice. night. Oh, did yeah. you? Nice. Yeah, very so we were cool. comparing notes but that very well could have been a cigar lounge mm -hmm. uh, conversation. We, we took the kids out to dinner, so... Yeah, yeah see, for me, there's, there's two different types, right? There's the, there's the prioritizing and planning that is solo. It's me. I need mm -hmm. to prioritize what's happening in my life, my, you know, my workload, my strategies for me to be successful. But then there's also the collaborative side, right? So, so for me, it's honestly sitting with a fishing pole and a cigar mm. and a drink. And maybe my son's there with me. But it fishing gives, is it, good. Fishing is great, Fishing is right? a good place, it, too. It, it allows me to have that kind of solitude a little bit, quiet, you know, and just be able to think through things, you know? But when it's with people, when it's a collaborative thing. Also, you have cigars while you're fishing, too. Are you noticing a, are you noticing a theme here, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. But a collaborative, not everybody is always going to be a cigar smoker, right? Right. So, so in a lot, God, that thing it's sounds got, he's awesome. Got a, that thing sounds awesome, Jim. <laughs> it sounds like a SpaceX <laughs> rocket taking I off. I love that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to totally no, like, okay. go, hey, look, a squirrel, but that thing sounds awesome. Mm. But there's a collaborative side, right? So, so there it's over a drink or over some food. And if we end up at a cigar bar later, sweet, very cool, right? But, it, but it's disconnecting yourself from the work. Yes. And getting right. out of that environment. That's the key, I think, to a lot of it is disconnecting from the environment and getting somewhere where you can not just be on in the work side of the aisle, where you can have conversations about other things. So food, drink. And then all of a you sudden, you have to be. I agree with Jason, Jim, to your your question too. I, if I had to add to that list, it would be when I'm on vacation or when I'm traveling on an airplane. Because mm -hmm. yep. I'm very much disconnected from right. the work, and I can think clearly. And yeah. I've got like yeah, yeah. notes and on planning stuff yep. on like random things that I pulled out of my bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like one was like a, an old CD sleeve or something that happened yep. to be in my bag, yep. and I got like a bunch of notes yeah. uh, on that. Now I try and travel with some kind of notebook, knowing that like when I'm on vacation and I'm unplugged and I sure. decompress for a day. 
oftentimes I can think more clearly and I'm like, oh, this is how I get more cigars. Yeah. As an example. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, 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 note, my notebook is literally this. I'll email myself. Mm -hmm. I'll just shoot myself an email of notes or shoot myself a team's message of, of notes, right? But perfect example is last Wednesday, my family jumped in the Suburban. We drove 10 hours to Williamsburg, Virginia because my son had a soccer tournament, a Memorial Day soccer tournament. Oh, so that was where it was, Virginia. Yes, Williamsburg, Virginia. Um, you know, invitational soccer tournament. And we were, we were you know, in this historic district that had like townhouses and the entire team was there. What does he play? Is it, what U level is he playing at? He's, well, he's at uh, 2011 is his age group. So okay. he's playing U13. Okay. Um, and he plays for the University of Rhode Island's prepare, premier team. Yep, yep. Um, but the folks. FC Rams, right? FC Rams. Yeah. Rams FC, yep. So, so the people that were there, the parents, a lot of professionals. There was the head of URI Soccer Association that mm -hmm. was there, right? And just sitting around at the pool while the kids were swimming in between games yep. or after the games, having good conversation with other professionals who are not in your industry. Right. Let me tell you, does that spawn the juices? It gets yeah. the juices flowing, right? So it's getting out of that environment. Having did you have cigars? I did bring cigars. Mm. Not everybody smokes cigars, sure. right? So, but I did bring cigars. And and. It's and just, in West Virginia, you can smoke cigars. Well, Virginia, just regular Virginia. It's regular Virginia. Regular Virginia. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not bad down there. But, um, but it, it gets the juices flowing. You know, asking someone who runs the University of Rhode Island soccer program mm -hmm. a business question. Yes. How would you handle this, right? How would you deal with something like this? And just being able to get that, that conversation back and forth, it, it gets you out of your, your kind of myopic environment. Right. right. And it just broadens the horizons. That, that's the stuff I love. You know? And I shoot myself out an email with some notes or some things that I want to remember. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just gets, gets your head in the game. Gets you back in the game. Stimulated again. What about you, Jim? Where do you go to plot mm -hmm. to take over the world? So, cigar Lounge. That's number one. Yep. Number one. Agreed. Number one. Um, second place is, you know, I live on kind of a mini farm. So just go down and hang out with the horses uh, with a cigar by myself um, and talk to the animals. <laughs> I love it. Mm. <laughs> That's great. You know, I, whisper, <coughs> I whisper to the fish when I have a fishing pole in my hand. <laughs> Here, fishy, fishy, and, fishy. And, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, your, your greatest you ideas... You say Hail Mary, come, too? Yeah. Is that from The Godfather? <laughs> it's The Godfather, so, you say Hail Sometimes Mary. your greatest ideas come at the weirdest places, you know, in the shower, in the bathroom, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, on, on the plane at 30,000 feet, you yep. know, you, you go, oh, that's a great idea. Right. Um, the epiphany moment. So, yeah. I, but I think number one for me is the cigar lounge because I do get that wide range of people who come in who are yeah. not in cyber whatsoever. You know, yep. you have um, a guy who owns a trucking company. You have someone who owns an import-export textile firm. You have um, someone who owns a, a dental uh, outfit. Um, you know, all, all varied backgrounds. Yep. And, and they have some great ideas and things that I never thought of before. Exactly. You know, I've gotten a lot of good advice, in the, I would say, in the past two years from being a member of two different cigar lounges. And, uh, and when they get ransomware, they'll call you now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, you know, it's one of those things. You know how it is. You walk into the place and, and it's, hey, Jim, hey, or hey, Paul. Uh, th this came and should I, should I click on it? Should, should I open I do it? Something yeah. with it? Right, right, right. <laughs> Is this legit? <laughs> but no, to your point, Jim, I mean, it's, it's the diversity of thought to get you out of the groupthink, right? Because groupthink can be your team. It can be your company. It can be your industry, right? And you start right. just kind of rolling with whatever the community is thinking to be able to suck yourself out of that and get diverse thought, I think, is, is the key. I love that. The power of the cigar lounge. Yeah, buddy. For sure. Um, what, hey, what has everyone been smoking? Ton of tatuaje. I've been smoking well, a ton of tatuaje. I have this lined up for later today. Oh, is that the one I smoked last time on the show? Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. What is, what is that called again? I always get the name wrong. This is the... Hold on. I need my glasses for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Anniversario number one. 
it's an awesome cigar. But I smoked it last week and just to like give you the quick mm. <clears throat> rundown, like box worthy for sure. I, yeah. It's it's really expensive cigar. Mm-hmm. Although I would probably fight Chuck Norris for it. You know, we haven't <laughs> we haven't gotten back to our rating system. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, the Stoic Geeks pioneered the rating system. Like up until we created the the show in this rating system, everyone scored their cigars uh, zero to one hundred. Okay. And rarely would you ever see a cigar that got what less than a seventy. Right. So it really ended up being like a a seventy to a hundred rating, but more so. What would you say, Joe? Eighty to a hundred. Like, well, you've read a lot well, of those. Pub, well, we all, published, well, it's 91 and up. like 80 yeah. to 95. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was hard. Yeah. So we were like, we're going to disrupt this whole thing. Yeah. I think it was Tim Muggerini and I, and then uh, other folks kind of contributed to it. And so if you go on our website, actually, stoicgeeks.com. Yeah, you um, had uh, Angler. Oh, hold on. But there was a couple of um, really funny ones that we added that maybe aren't, like, official. <laughs> um, in the rating system. And so um, we had the, the worst rating. <clears throat> so I'll go from worst to best. We got the lawn mulch. <laughs> and that's the cigar is so bad that while you're mowing the lawn, you throw the cigar in front of the lawnmower and mulch it up. And it helps. The, I don't know if it's going to help the lawn grow. I don't want to pretend that I'm uh, an expert in lawn care because I'm, I don't, I'm not. I just I hack my way through it. But then there was one time where Stogie Santa was talking on the show, and someone had given him a cigar, and he did not like it at all. And he, it was on a cruise ship in the area where he can smoke on the cruise ship. <laughs> and he took the cigar, and he hawked it over the side. Uh-oh. So lawn mulch also has an alternative, and that's throw it over the side of the boat. Nice. <laughs> fish food. It's fish food, yeah. <laughs> then we've got the, the angler, which is while you're fishing, if you would uh, smoke Because it's really hard to pay attention to the flavors in a cigar, especially if you're having a great fishing day. Yeah, right. Um, and your hands smell like fish. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that's the, the angler. Then we've got um, the two and a half, which is a try one. Mm-hmm. Then we've got a fiver. Then we've got a box split. Then we've got a box worthy. And yeah. so box worthy is a four. So this is a, a basically a five, zero to five, but we've got uh, what we call them floating points in our industry decimals uh, for those of you who are <laughs> not into computer programming um so we do the floating point thing so we got four is a box worthy four and a half was this is my favorite one and i don't know how we came up with this um we were just drinking and someone blurted it out and i was like look it's not quite a five and a five is an oasis right mm-hmm. this is like if you were stuck in the desert and you only had to bring one cigar with you it's that one it, it's an oasis. So oasis is the highest rating. Uh, a four and a half is what we call a fight Chuck Norris for it. <laughs> Cigar is so good that I would fight Chuck Norris for it. I mean, I'd probably lose, but I'd at least make an attempt. I mean, not even probably because it's Chuck Norris. But <laughs> 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 I mean, Superman wears Chuck Norris pajamas. So, you know, there's that. So, so you're saying you wouldn't fight Chuck Norris for an oasis? No, we would. You would. would. No, for an oasis, I would. Yeah, I, in an oasis, I would fight Chuck Norris in the desert. <laughs> yes. Okay. If Chuck Norris and I were stuck on a desert island, <laughs> I would fight him for this cigar. As so if you wanted to combine a four and a half and a five, Jim, that's what it would look like. So, so where do you put um, uh, an acid? Acids aren't, I mean, uh, there are, it depends on <laughs> which one we're talking about. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Because some of the acids are not, <clears throat> excuse me, horrible. <clears throat> I think there are some that are probably lawn mulch, and your lawn's going to smell fantastic, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you run that over with your lawnmower, <laughs> the aroma's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and most of the, the uh, acids for me... In the flavors that I like, like the Cuba Cuba, I find to be, and I haven't had one in a decade or more. Um, but when I was like, I got I to gotta at least try them, right? I can't say that I don't like them if I haven't tried it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried a bunch of the, and the Cuba Cuba is not bad. Uh, so I would call that one an angler. And actually, while yeah. you're fishing, not a bad cigar to have mm-hmm. because it has that, um, I don't want to say manufactured. It, 
it has, and I don't want to say artificial either, but it has a flavor infusion. Yeah. And so, like, while you're fishing, because of that flavor infusion, I don't have to pay attention as much because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to recognize that flavor because it's been infused. It's an infused right. cigar. Uh, yeah, that's why I, I, I would consider blueberry. it somewhere between <laughs> lawn mulch and fish food. Mm. Mm. Infused okay. fish food. <laughs> No, I just don't dig. I just don't dig it. In terms of flavored cigars, though, we I was talking about this with someone that I met um, because this is the thing I love about cigars. You go. I went to a party, and I didn't know uh, everyone there, right? And I brought cigars, and I got to know some new people Mm -hmm. because they're like, "Oh, I love cigars." I'm like, "Well, I just happen to I have a couple cigars in my humidor." (laughs) Just a couple. Just a couple. They're like, "Wait, what do you mean?" (laughs) Like, let's take a walk because it was right next door. And they're like, wow, I guess, you know, my cabinet's at home. And then, uh, so I made new friends with cigars. And um, that is a great, you know, kind of social aspect of cigars is, is meeting new people. Oh, and then I got to talking to this person about uh, infused cigars. And I like the, and I haven't had one of these in a long time as well. But I used to buy them next door. And it was the Nub Cafe. Mm, Nub Cafe. I had those. Uh, Nub Cafe. Espresso or cappuccino? I can't remember which one. Yeah. I think it was the cappuccino. Nub, cafe, cappuccino. Mm-hmm. Great infused cigar. I find when your palate is tired. Yep. And so we used to do the security podcast, Paul Security Weekly, on Thursdays um, from like 6 to 8 or something like that. And then Stogie Geeks was immediately following. Um, and then uh, from whatever time. So then on Friday morning, having smoked cigars all day and all night. My pal is tired. Sure. And so I would light up the <clears throat> Nub Cafe mm-hmm. Espresso or Cappuccino. I can't remember which yeah. one. I, I can get down with those. Like, yeah. Because it's once coffee. In a great while. In a great while. Like once I said, when my while. palate's tired and I just yeah. want something that uh, I can easily pick up the flavors on that I'm pairing with a coffee in the morning, that's actually a really great... Uh, and I've tried a, a ton of infused cigars. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that... That would be the one if I yeah, had to, me too. you know, gun Same. to my head. You got to smoke a flavored cigar yep. right now. Be one of those. Agreed. Have you tried a lot of it? Have you tried those, Jim? Have you I've tried a lot of really infused? Been into infused cigars mm. or flavored cigars. Um, I don't know. To me, you should it's, try it's, them. Yeah, it's, try it's, them. It's sort of like saying I'm going to mix uh, my bourbon with some wine. You know, it's kind of like what am I? What am I tasting here? I don't know. Well, is it? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, though. They're naturally infused, though, right? It's not like some chemical they're putting. No, in no, 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 no. Well, with at, so Ac- I'm, ta- I'm not talking about acid. I'm acid about is the, a, the, the we've all, I mean, if you've been to a Drew Estate event, yeah. they yeah. give you information, right, about how they infuse the cars, but they only tell you so much because it's. I mean, they could probably tell you like this is like the wood we use to put in the in the room, but like, you're not going to be able to replicate that unless you have the entire process. Right. Right. It's kind of like, uh, you know, top secret information, uh, in the government and military. Oftentimes it's not the data that was collected. Mm -hmm. It was the secret is how you got that data. I think it's the same thing with Drew Estates Mm -hmm. acid. It's not necessarily what flavors they're infusing because you can taste that and you can Mm -hmm. go, well, I could put this kind of wood or whatever in there. And it's the process is the real secret. Um, so you should try them, Jim. I mean, don't go buy it in a box, right? right? But, like, pick up one and, uh, you know, like, go for a walk and smoke it. Or, like, if you're fishing or doing some other activity. Mm-hmm. Um, and see if you like it. Right. Yeah. You know, it's so. funny because I have a box. Where did it go? You're not very good at finding things today, Jim. I mean, you lost the world's most giant cigar lighter Seriously? earlier. <laughs> I, I have this box here. <laughs> Oh, the Weller. Cohiba? The Wellers. Yeah. Uh, Weller. Mm-hmm. Oh, did they whiskey infuse mm-hmm. cigars? Yeah. I have a whiskey infused cigar, but you know what's funny is someone gave it to me so long ago that probably the infusion has worn off by now. Yeah. And I've only smoked one of them. Yeah. yeah and you, it probably wasn't your favorite thing to smoke considering you have a whole box and you've only smoked <laughs> one. Right. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried bourbon-infused cigars, rum-infused cigars. I don't know. There's just something about it that just doesn't, I don't know. It just doesn't sit with me well. Right. It, it's, it's confusing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's 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 a little it's a little strong for the cigar. Like I I don't know. I just I didn't dig the bourbon one, the rum one. I almost feel like I'd have to let it rest for a long time to get a lot of that. Yeah, so the infusion the infusion go infusion, yes. Have it go away a little bit. Correct. So it's a lighter it's a lighter taste of the infused. And don't put those right next to no, non-infused right, right. cigars. Right. Uh, it, I think it's similar to uh, I have a, a bunch of pipe tobacco, mm-hmm. which we should do that again. I believe we did a pipe tobacco episode. We should. The, the three of us I know here in studio have pipes. Jim, mm-hmm. you, have you tried the the what what's in your pipe that you've been smoking? <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Jim. Well, you have know, you tried? You've tried the pipe, right? So, so we are in California here, so. You can't have pipes in California. <laughs> you, you can't be born after the year two thousand and buy a pipe. <laughs> it's like some weird science fiction movie. If you're born over two thousand and you have a pipe, you get a, a, a tag of some kind, yeah, and they hunt right, you down. Right. You only and they get, take you're you only allowed the, three yeah. puffs, <laughs> and they take you to the prison camp where you have to work for the state of California. <laughs> And you, ironically, you'd work in the marijuana fields for the state of California. <laughs> yeah, right, totally. yeah. <laughs> but have you, you've done the pipe uh, tobacco thing? Jim? Yes. So, long time ago, much uh, before starting my cigar path, I smoked a lot of different uh, loose leaf tobacco. Um, uh, and I went away from it for a few years and I'm actually starting to come back to it because I actually mm-hmm. like, which is funny, now we're going back to infused flavors. I actually do enjoy yeah, great the, the, flavored mm-hmm. uh, loose leaf tobacco in a pipe. Yeah, agreed. Well, it, it's different. I don't know why or how or it's what. Totally it, it's, different. it's just totally yeah. different. More somehow more appealing right. when the pipe tobacco yeah. is infused more so than a cigar. Right. I, I, I can't. I, I mean, couldn't give you, think, you a scientific. It, it pains me being a nerd and a hacker not to have like the the scientific reason why. Because <laughs> I don't think you could come up with one. I think it's no. just it's just a feeling. Like it just. And it's a better it, experience. It, it's polar opposite, right? Like right now for my pipe tobacco, I have <clears throat> Irish cream and cherry Cavendish. Those are the, those are the two mm. that I have right now. Which Whoa. if you if if I if I brought that into the cigar world, I would say hell no, I don't want that. <laughs> but it's right? re- it's really good in pipe tobacco. I have uh, one of the Drew Estate uh, pipes. Oh yeah, they begin with a T. What is uh? What are those called? I'm trying with a T T S U something like that. Something yeah, like something that, like that. Right? Yeah, Drew. Yeah, they're, they're metal, and you can clean them better. Oh, really? Uh, Jim, I, I I'm kind of into pipe tobacco. Um, you were smoking pipes uh, uh quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, when yeah. When you're here in the studio. Yeah, I still do. I mean, I like pipe tobacco in the morning, uh, before a cigar. I think because, you know, the bowl is like, you know, maybe 20 minutes, you kind of get going and, and, you know, your palate's the freshest. But like if you smoke like non-flavored pipe tobacco and then smoke a cigar, Mm -hmm. I feel it opens up the palate because of the way it burns. Mm -hmm. So I actually start to taste the cigar differently. Like we, Mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's just, it's just different for me. So prep your palate, you think? uh, I, I don't know if it really preps it. To yeah. me, the best way that I can describe it is, you know how you have, like, an aerator for, like, wine? Mm-hmm. It kind of, like, aerates my palate, if oh, you will, yeah. to open it up, and I sure. can taste things kind of differently. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I get on, on, on the pipe yeah. for sure. Yeah, um, I have a uh, white elephant pipe. Oh, yeah, yeah. A white yeah. elephant, and then I have an Erin Gobra. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the guy that makes the, the pipes? The really good pipes. It's named after the guy. Uh, what's his uh, name? No, oh. I can't find it. Start with an S. Uh, what do you mean, like the company? Pipe brand. The yeah, brand. it's the brand. a Peterman. Peterman. Peterson. Oh, maybe Peterson. Yeah. Peterson. Peterson. Yeah, yeah, I have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a Peterson. Peterson. I have a, Peterson's I have a, a famous, uh, yeah. famous brand. And yep. the Drew Estate ones. What are those called now? It's. Uh, it begins with a T. I know that. Um, Chusuga. Yeah, yes. something like that. It's yeah. Yeah. T S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, those are some pretty silent? sweet. Suga, su- yeah, 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 yeah. T S U G E. 
Ooh. Suji. Maybe. I forget how to pronounce it. But I picked up one of those. Those pipes are awesome. Oh, I was thinking of Savinelli pipes. Yeah. Savinelli is another Savinelli. one. Yeah. Peters, yeah. Peterson. 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 Savinelli. He was doing Savinelli. he was doing cigars. Um, at one time. I met I I want to say I met him. I think he came into Mr. J's because he was branching out <clears throat> and having a line of his own cigars. Yeah. I, uh, interesting side note, which is kind of related, is uh, Laganisi, which is a big distributorship for pipe uh, cigars. They purchased Caldwell. Yes, I saw that. So what? pretty interesting. That. So pretty yep, interesting yep. there. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, of course, it was an undisclosed amount, but, <laughs> right, right, you know, right. it's all good. <laughs> Maybe Which, it wasn't. You know, we talk, you we know, talked now it. it wasn't Peterson. We're going to have to do a whole pipe episode. Yeah, we now. should. I'll bring yeah. a pipe. I have a Peterson pipe. Uh, I actually have a um, uh, a couple of pipes. They're in my car. So, mm. uh, you know, I have a uh, Savinelli Lime, which they don't make anymore. Mm. Um, I have an Elijah Cole, which was an alias name. The real guy who, who made it is Robert Clark. He had passed. He he made custom pipes. Wow! And he was local. He lived yep, in yep. Warren. Oh, nice! And so uh, lo- super local. Yep, nice. Yeah, and he, if you, and then he probably made off the top of my head probably like a hundred pipes. Yeah. And then when he had passed, uh, the shop owner gave me one of his pipes, yeah. and it was like you know it's like because he never really like launched the brand. Mm-hmm. He did like for friends and sure, stuff like sure. that. Yep. But like he would make it out of like the actual briar from a yeah. block, and yep. and yep. then you would pay to like you know see the briar. You could he does yep. a video of him yep. building your pipe and stuff like that. Yeah. So stuff like that's super cool. I have a um I have a, a friend of mine that I met through the cigar community. He's on a couple of Discord servers that I'm on, mm-hmm. and um, he's on Veterans of the Leaf with me. He's on Hooligans. Um, he does the same thing. It's Satellite Mike's Pipes. Mm-hmm. He makes some incredible pipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All handmade. Yeah. So he'll literally take your order, hand make it, and ship it to you. Mm. So, I mean, he has a big backlog, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, his hands are on every single one. Yeah, he gets to make a pipe. custom pipe, which yeah. is super so, cool. So super how many nice. pipes do you own? Me? Yeah. I, I only have five, but... So, Only. so I have five. Yeah. Another one, another one I have is from uh, uh, Briarworks, which uh, you know they make all different pipes and stuff like that. They're a they're an interesting shop. They're they're a small shop where which you know they have pipe tobacco and they also have cigars mm. and stuff like that. So I don't know. Did did uh, Joyles continue <laughs> to carry pipes? I want to say when I go in there now. Mm-hmm. They might have some pipe tobacco. Yeah. I don't even know if they carry they pipes. pipes. I know Jenna, uh, the humidor here in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah, for sure. She, she's yeah. big into the, the pipe thing. And, oh, it has been, I mean, since when her dad owned the shop uh, in the, what, when did her dad own the shop? In the 80s? 70s? Yeah. 80s? Er, early, yeah. It was, I would say like wow. late 70s, like 78 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And they were, uh, we've talked about this on the show. Now it's all coming back to me. Mm. Uh, Jenna's uh, family blended pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think similar, Jim, the way you would like blend whiskey. It's it, it blend. Yeah. They, you know, you'd take a certain percentage of this tobacco, a certain percentage of this, and they'd blend their own. And then I want to say the story goes that that was like their number one selling. It was like the number one selling pipe tobacco in the state. Like I, really yeah, I believe it was called Yellow Jacket. I, I think, still have oh, wow. some. I think they you? still made Yellow Jacket. I but still they have had some. To, I Like think in they, my car. They call it like... <laughs> <laughs> but now they call it like yellow jacket number two, or maybe it is the same. Yeah. Because one yeah. of the pipe tobaccos, I want to say they had to swap out for something else. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite the same. Yeah. But yellow jacket, still to this day, and I'm glad you remember the name because I would have never remembered the name. Sure, sure. Uh, it's still an awesome pipe tobacco. But in the awesomeness comes from not just the flavor, but the way it burns. And yeah, also, because pipes, you know, are very, this re- reason why I smoke cigars and not pipes, because mm-hmm. I can cut and light a cigar. It's totally fine. Yeah. But a pipe, you guys know, like, and you know, if you guys, if our listeners, if you haven't smoked pipes or you're just getting into it, right, it's it's kind of tedious. Like, yeah, you got to put it on the yeah. piece of paper and you got to fill the thing and then you got to tamp the thing and you got to make you don't want to pack it too tight or too right. loose. Yeah. There's a little yeah, there's yeah. some nuances there. Where right, a cigar, right, right. it's you light right. up a cigar, picking at it, you're lighting it, relighting yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. And if I could in. jump in, the um, yellow jacket is a great blend to break in mm. a pipe. Because you got to get the cake. Yeah, because right? you got to get the cake up. Because when you, when you smoke a pipe at first, you know, you're like, okay, I'm, you, you really don't get the flavors for so a you while. Build up that cake. Oh, you got to yeah. build up the actual cake. And, and um, you know, it's, it's super cool because you can yeah. put it down. You know, you can put that down and cut your grass for three hours and go back and light it. Yeah. And the, it's, yeah, right. Yeah. Because uh, the Drew Estate one has a, a screw on cap. Yes. Yeah. So you can cap yeah, it. Really? Come back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Now, now, the maintenance on pipe tobacco is not as. Like, you don't have. It, it no. doesn't have to be in a humidor. And, and no, no. You, you, can, do, easier, you right? can do bag as long as it's yeah. not in direct sunlight. I know people put it in like mason jars. Yeah, yeah. You can, yeah. You, you can go buy mason jars or you can do bags, but. I put cool. it in a Ziploc bag, and I just put it in my humidor, like, as mm. far away from everything as I can. Yep. And then, also, if it ever gets too dry, you can actually spray it with, like, a mist water. Really? And then like, shake like it in a bag. Still, and, 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 and It'll rehumidify. It'll rehumidify. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, just a different process. Um, yeah. you know. It's like that Ar- Armenian bread. You can do the same <laughs> thing with. <laughs> Except you eat it. It's but like it's the same thing. You put water. And I forget the name of it. I'm bad with the names. But... It's a special kind of bread, <clears throat> and you put water on it to kind of soften it up. Yep. And then <clears throat> if it dries out again, you can just, like, rehydrate uh, it. It's totally nice. fine. Nice. Same thing with pipe tobacco. But don't eat the pipe tobacco. No. So let's talk more about cigars. Okay. Yes. I smoked in um, – this came – I believe this came from Casa Fuente – um, whenever, I mean, when was my last summer camp? You know, it was before, pre-pandemic. Uh, 2019. 2019 summer yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. Probably came from that. Um, it is a, uh, a Toro Fuente Hemingway with a risotto wrapper on it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I remember now talking to the person who was working at Casa Fuente, and he was like, dude, these things are awesome. Yeah. He's like, it's a great morning smoke. He's like, mm-hmm. I've been smoking one Every morning, and they came in all the Hemingway yep, yep. sizes. sizes yep. Uh, I can't, I couldn't tell I you off the top I have of my one head. Or two at home. <clears throat> I don't remember all the Hemingway sizes off the top of my head. The downside to going to Casa Fuente is they always try and limit you to one cigar of each type. Well, you, you just got to go there with multiple people, right? <laughs> they don't, they, they, they don't they're smoke. just they don't, don't smoke, smoke or yeah, smoke yeah, or right, smoke. Right. They're just by there and buying one cigar. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're not buying that cigar. Buy a different cigar. And then uh, if you make friendly with the people there, uh, this is totally how to hack Casa Fuente. Uh, <laughs> you can be like, I'm here with five people and me, so that's six. Yep. So then you buy six. Yep. Yeah. That's what I've done in, uh, in the past. Um, but this cigar was still awesome. Again, with some age on it. Yeah. It was, it was pretty, so, so speaking- pretty amazing. This had to be maybe, my guess would be a classic. Seven by forty-eight. Uh-huh. I think it was a classic, or a signature, one of the two. Yeah. Classic or classic is seven by forty-eight. Signature is six by forty-seven. And looking at the picture, I don't think I could tell you which one it is, mm. but it was at one of those sizes. Awesome, awesome cigar. Now, while probably we were... uh, a fight, Chuck Norris, in my fight opinion. Chuck. Nice, it was fight, Chuck Norris. Now, while we were on the Stogie Geeks hiatus, I had the opportunity to meet Carlito Junior. Hmm. At RC over here in East Greenwich. Oh yeah, I got to. I mean, he he went around the lounge and spent time with people. Mm. And um, because I belong to the Veterans of the Leaf um, Cigar Club, I ended up giving him a patch. And he's big into you know military law enforcement. Mm-hmm. He does a whole thing down down in Florida every year for for law enforcement and first responders. He took the patch and he's actually he said he put it in uh, put it in their headquarters. It's going to nice. be up there with all the, the Leo patches. So super cool. Great guy. I mean, want to talk about an awesome dude. I think I saw pictures. Did you post yeah, pi- yeah, I, I, you I posted, posted pictures. Picture. Yeah. I posted a picture of it. But what a guy, man. I mean, it's, it's amazing. in, in the cigar yeah. world, he's a rock star, right? Yeah. And for him to sit down and spend time with every single group of people that were in that lounge, incredible. I've that's been, I talked to him for a good half an hour. It's a lot of social energy it is. being expended uh, to do that. A ton. So. But he's, he's in it to win it. And he's got to be what, in his 70s? Early seventies, gotta be. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Right. I mean, talk about the energy and just wanting to engage with everyone. It's awesome. Really, really good guy. Really. Good What'd guy. you get for smokes? From there, um, I ended up getting you know the four pack of the Opus, the yellow. Mm-hmm. I got. I got one of those. They gave out a, bu- a few of them there too. So it was. It was. It was a good experience. Yeah. I want to say I, I smoked there. I smoked Don Carlos while I was there. Mm. 
Yeah. Don Carlos is awesome. It's a good stick. Yeah. yeah it's a very nice stick. Dogs there. They got some awesome special releases of the Don Carlos, yeah. too. I've got a couple of boxes in my humidor of a couple of different yeah. ones. And yep, yep. Every once in a while, I go yep. back to it, and I'm like, Phew. Oh, you know what? I'll, I, got, I got some of the pink series there, too. What did you think of the pink series? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So that, it wasn't just me. <laughs> yeah. Did you get, get any of the... It's called the Arturo Fuente Rare Pink, Jim. Mm-hmm. I have not even heard of it. Yeah. Yep. Rare Came out pink. in October uh, for, for Breast Cancer Awareness yep. Month, yep. I believe... In like That's, four different sizes, yeah, too. like yes. crazy, yep. crazy sizes. Crazy sizes. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think this is their second year on that. I think so too. I think the rare pink. The rare pink that. has been yep. around as a very rare Fuente cigar yep. for quite some time. Uh, I'm not sure um, exactly when it was released, um, but they came out. You're right. Recently, this looks like the recent ones. In a signature short story, yep. work of art. Um, yeah, it's one a, called it's, it's a, a, a Happy Ending. Happy Ending. It's in a those, five and a half anyway. by fifty three. Yep, 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 a yep. Queen of Hearts with a. It's a four. Hooker. No, it's <laughs> not. It's not a hooker. <laughs> no, it says sophisticated hooker. Yeah. Oh they, no, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm they sorry. They have a yeah, sophisticated yeah, hooker. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a, a happy ending and a sophisticated. The sophisticated hooker is a seven and a quarter by fifty three. Yeah. The Queen of Hearts is a four in one eighth mm-hmm. by sixty. That was the short, fatty short one. one. I smoked yep, some yep, of those, yep. but again, I thought all of them were just okay. They were just okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, okay. yeah. I I took three or four, uh, and I set them aside. That's what I I, I had. I think every- I bought like two of every size. I went to a couple of different exactly shops, to smoke some, I exactly what and I, I took like a, whatever I had left at a certain point, and I was like, you know what? I'm I put, have put every Vitola resting right now. Yeah, good for you. Yep. I don't think I have every single one, but. Probably three or four out of those mm-hmm. lines. Those lost right cities there. that you have, Paul, are, are better. Which the, lost cities? The, 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 what was that? Lost City Opus? I think are better than the Rare Pinks. Yeah. The, it's the, a black the lost label. City, lost it's City. Oh, label. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those are, those are I think, like really spot on. But, yeah, the Pinks were okay. If you see them knocking mm-hmm. around, I'm sure if you go online, Jim, you can probably get you know, a 10-pack or something yeah, like definitely. that. You can get samplers, too. Yeah. yeah. You can find samplers. Um, you know what I had? Speaking of black, I had the EP Carrillo Encore Black. Mm. That's a good stick. Mm. Yeah, I haven't some, smoked EPC some, in in some. It's got time. some bite to it, but it's a good stick. Yeah, really good stick. And which one is that? EP, EP Carrillo. Carrillo Encore. I think it's Encore Black. Hold on. Which, what is which one is it? Ernesto Perez Carrillo. So it's uh, EP Carrillo. EP Carrillo Black. Yeah, Encore Black. Yep. Oh, it's like black. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I see. No, but that's a... Uh, I just looked at the picture quick. It's a very it's, dark it's, wrapper, but there's... It's got a dark... The yeah. band on the end is... Yeah. Uh, it's like a, like a, full, a It's like a sleeve. Yeah. The sleeve is yeah. black. The yep. sleeve is uh, black. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper. Mm. San Andreas binder. Yep. And then filler mm. is Condego, Esteli, and Jalapa. Mm-hmm. I'll have to pick a, some of those really up. Good stick. I used to love. That was a the, buy a box. I would buy a box. I used to find the new wave Reserva in the Toro size, mm. um, and I used to buy bundles and closeouts of them. Mm-hmm. There was a, <laughs> I think Atlantic Cigar had. Uh, bun- Remember, I bought like three or four. Oh yeah, yeah. It would come up every once in a while, and Atlantic would have three bundles, mm-hmm. and I would buy every single one, and then they'd be <laughs> sold out for a year. Like that's all they would get was three bundles, and you'd buy all three, and I would buy all three. <laughs> And then sometimes I would find boxes, and then all of a sudden, like, it dried up and went yeah. away. And that yeah. was one of my most favorite cigars. Yeah. Every day, smoking cigar, I would smoke one. Of, the reason why I would buy three bundles is because I would literally smoke one every day when I got into the office. Yeah. That was my first cigar. And I never grew tired of it. Like, yeah. yeah, that was your go-to for a while. Oh, so great. Now, my go-to is... HVC, right? HVC Cerro Toro. Nice. And those... Um, I don't want to see now. I don't want to say where I'm getting them because people, <laughs> people <laughs> they go buy them. <laughs> oh, is that the black? I got, I got the Black Friday. Nice. Yeah. Oh, the Black Friday black HBC. Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I love the HBC Cerro Toro because it's a a fuller bodied cigar, but not super high in the nicotine scale. Mm-hmm. So like you can smoke it in the morning, and it's nothing like smoking in Connecticut. It's got a lot of body, um, but you don't get there. You don't yeah. get the like nicotine sickness from it. Right. So. That is my, that is currently my go-to, for sure. 
in, in between there, it was uh, Me Carita, which I got to get back to. Oh, yeah. Um, Uncle Largo, what, what, Me, what, me what Carita. We, what we have to do as well, which I brought, I brought one just in case I was going to smoke it, but these um, pork tenderloins, the new wave. Oh, the Tuluxa? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to smoke these again now that they've been aged. Because oh, I bet I you they've have... been aged for it. Because remember I bought them, we smoked them, I only had them for about a week or two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now I have them aged. Mm-hmm. And I still have a box. Like I probably have three quarters of the box still. So I have well, a, maybe half the box. I have a, you know, I have a <laughs> box. Smoke them again to see I have a aged. box of Tasuahe that, um, bum, ba, da, bum. where is the, where is the link? Oh, wait, uh, I got it. It is the Tatuaje Black Label Britannica's Extra. Did I talk about this last, last time on the show? That sounds, used, might, maybe. Yeah. Go for it. I have a, I have a box of these uh, that needs to be delivered to me. All right. I got to follow up with it. Oh, you know what I got to say? This was too? the one that I tell you Jeff was giving them out at B-Sides Charm. Oh, really? Like, oh, just, you know, smoke whatever. And, mm. and I grabbed one and I was like, dude, the cigar is awesome. And mm-hmm. then when I got back, I was like, text me a, a, a picture of that. And I had to do a lot of research. And I'm like, no, it's this one Tatuaje Black Label Britannica's Extra. They only made 500 boxes. Uh, oh. It's a Nicaraguan sun-grown Criollo oh. Esteli wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler, five and three inches by forty-eight MSRP of eleven dollars. Um, and he bought a box, I, and I paid mm. him for it, and I still don't have the box yet. <laughs> we ha- we also have to smoke again because I think I may have maybe three to five left. The RC number ones. Remember I went hunting. Oh yeah. Remember oh. I went hunting yeah. and I found them. I think I may have three. They left. were nothing three like the originals, though. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, I mean, I that's, I that's the way this yeah. cigar but industry goes. But they've been goes. aged now. That's the thing. That was another one where I got the box and I brought it to the show right away. I didn't age those for long. So it'd be cool to do reboots on things that we, that we smoked on the show that needed a bit of age. Um, I found a, uh, and it's, it's one of those boutique companies that just came out. I mean, 2023, the company came out, but it's called, the, the company's called Lure, like a fishing mm-hmm. lure cigar. So right away, I was like on it. You were hooked. I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have a Corojo and I have a Habano. You guys can pick which ones you want. You can fight over them. But, um, but the story of this, this cigar company is really cool. It, it, it spoke to me because of all the conversations that you and I have, Paul. He started the company because him and his father, when he was a kid, used to go fishing and his dad would smoke cigars, mm-hmm. right? And it's kind of his, his memory of, of him hanging out with his dad and spending time with his father on the lake, fishing, mm-hmm. great experiences. And dad always ripped a cigar, right? Every single time they went fishing. And it's kind of like me and my son, you know? I was going to sure, say, I'm just sure, like our kids, remember, like our kids will remember, remember us, us right? Yeah. My dad did the same thing. Exactly. We would always be fishing, so it's like, you know, smoking cigars. It's like at the end of the day, I'm like, ooh, I got to try these. I, I just ordered them, so maybe let them sit for a little while, but I figured I'd bring them. You guys can you try smoke it. them yet? I haven't smoked it yet. Oh. I literally, I mean, probably two weeks, but I figured I'd bring one of each for you guys. You guys can try it, you know, and uh, tell me what you think. But I have, I have quite a few at home. And so, uh, yeah, I plan to so smoke those and see how boutique, they do. So when you say boutique, do you mean they're like a, a non-grower, non-roller? Yep. They, they go and taste a few samples and decide which ones they like, and then they put their label on it? Is that what you mean? Yeah, so they, they, this company works with Valakari Valcar, Cigar Company mm-hmm. to, to, to make their cigars. So he works with blenders to, to, to build the cigar that he wants and then puts the line out there. Nice. Yep. So, but it was, it's such a cool story. I had, to, uh, I had to put it out there. So Lure Cigars. Lure Cigars. Lure Cigars, yep. Hmm. And, and their, their motto is smoke great cigars and and tell tall tales mm. like every fisherman right tell like tall every tales. fish was this big <laughs> <laughs> outstanding what what else have we been smoking joe what have you been uh, getting after lately is it still kind of a mixed bag or you typically don't do you typically have a cigar you smoke regularly or no? yeah i mean i'm still i'm still on some of the rojas stuff still mm-hmm. it's been a solid three three years He's developed a couple of sticks yep. uh, from from then. Uh, he came out with the second version of the Cinco de Mayo. Uh, How was that? I ordered. Some. I, I thought. I thought. Well, he he also came out 
like about a month before with the 10th anniversary. I think mm. Cinco de Mayo is better than the 10th anniversary. Yep. If you smoke a, a Rojas 10th anniversary, uh, it needs to rest a little bit. Or if you're impatient like me, you do a little small V cut and smoke it slow, and you'll you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there I've been I've been um, you know uh, there was a couple of experimental blends that are, are coming out. One was coming out with uh, Alec Bradley before purchase that I was on the uh, team for. But uh, that stick probably won't come out. Uh, it was supposed to be out already, but when they got purchased by Forged, it was it was on the back burner. But um, you know, uh, I'm I'm doing some Rojas. I've been on uh, Espinosa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really digging the uh, Scaro, uh, the uh, six and one. Yep. Um, Boulevard came out with one um, with Forged now. Um, uh, it's a Boulevard Robusto that has an Oscuro wrapper. Mm. I'm kind of into that. Um, the Matt Booth or Room 101 Hit and Run. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've been on that, 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 which is, you know, I remember smoking Matt Booth when he was with Camacho way back then, and I yeah. was a Room 101 fan for sure. You know, then he retired, oh, came had, back, I've retired, awesome, came back. Yeah, you know, I've had some so, awesome. Room yeah, one. yeah. I've, room, I've gotten yeah. some on on closeouts. Yeah, I've talked room about on the show before. Yeah. Oh. So room one hundred and one now. So, represent, baby, represent right here. It's so room one hundred and one. Is that yeah. his, Oh yeah, that yeah. is his logo. That's Sakura, yeah, it's a Sakura flower. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So room one hundred and one uh, just launched the hit and run uh, again. I I. I treat cigars like my golf. I like things smaller than a Toro. I rather golf three nines a week than just golf yeah, one eighteen. You, <laughs> you know there what I mean? Go. So I kind of like the uh, smaller cigars. So I'm digging the the Robusto hit and run. Um, tried Romeo and Juliet's third crack at a Nicaraguan cigar. It's amazing how some of these classic facings that are known from the Dominican Republic are trying to get into the Nicaraguan game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Romeo and Julieta got it right with the midnight twist. Uh, however, I believe I'm going to have a 50-50 shot of getting this right. It's either a collaboration with AJ or it's a collaboration with E.P. Carrillo. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I've been on that for a little bit, but then I kind of like like dwindled out of that. Still on the Rojas and still on the, the Espinosa uh, stuff for sure. If you're pilot, if you want something different from Espinosa, get the wasabi. Mm. They're next door. They're so tasty, and, and they're completely different. Like, don't you know? Um, and then uh, also, I've been on some Dissident and some of the newer stuff by Black Label. Nice. Um, the the Santa Morte by Black Label, and they came up with a new one. The name's escaping me. Oh, orth- orthodox. I, I got it back in my in my Rolodex of, of, of labels. So, I'm so like, how many through. cigars a day do you smoke? Well, uh, I am a uh, business development rep for uh, a couple of cyber companies, so I have the opportunity to work remote. But believe it or not, uh, I'm 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 a very slow smoker, and I'll burn through like three robustos a day on a eight hour business work day so you know it's not too much i don't think yep. you know uh we have little kids at home uh we have a six-year-old in september and a three-year-old who just turned three so um you know i don't really smoke at night and until after bedtime but i'm still in the mix with kids uh as far as them being so little so yeah. to go outside on the deck at eight thirty. And stay up for another two hours. No, nah, I'm good. I'll just have a couple right, drinks right, and go to bed right. at like ten. Truth, truth. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Because truth. so, so I'm not, I didn't get like my life, my nightlife back yet, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so to speak. But yeah, you know. So well, I mean, I got, I have a, three I, a day. Jim. I have a thirteen year old and ten year old, and I still don't have my life back. Yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're telling me it's not going to change, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> so you, you know. Yeah, still a lot of still a lot of so, so you're telling me it's not going to change. So yeah. So you know, it's. Uh, I gotta go to soccer after this and <laughs> soccer tomorrow. Soccer tonight, yep. soccer tomorrow, soccer Sunday. Soccer and baseball uh, tomorrow. <laughs> there's an SRI Cup on yep. Sunday. Yep. 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 Are you? Oh, but your son's older, so he's older. Because that's play. only yeah, you. So we're playing. U- yeah, we're playing. Uh, he has he has practice tonight. A game on Saturday. A game on Sunday. Yep. Yeah, no so we live at the soccer field. It's, no doubt. It's 100%. wonderful. 
Sin Sin from uh, Dissident has been they've been coming out with some really cool shit. Yeah, I'm 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 just getting into the Dissident Mm -hmm. type stuff because you know we recently had the the show and shops are starting to get them. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you know, uh, it's it's good. I'm not into like the new brands that have come out from the show. Uh, You know, uh, I'm very disappointed in what everybody did. I mean, even Alto Fluente. Just offered Casa oh, Fluente. Seventeen ninety two. Yes. Yes. Seventeen ninety two. Not in the decanter. I did. You know what? Now that I think of it, the red ribbon. I'm gonna hold this up. The the red ribbon on this one uh, indicates seventeen ninety two. What I need to do is I need to get um, like a little uh, chain with like a little plaque. There you go. That yeah. has like a little whiteboard or chalkboard mm-hmm. on it, so I can yeah. write on it and then easily like erase it and. And right, well, we've been decanting. And these decanters I bought on Amazon, super, super cheap. They're not expensive at all. Because, again, I was like, you know, going to be yeah. knocking them around on set. Uh, and the staves are super cheap, too. And I tend to reuse uh, the staves uh, for quite some time. Uh, until I, I'll use them until if I can notice a difference, then it's time to swap it out, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so that, that's been my strategy uh, with bourbon. What's interesting is... A word of caution that I haven't talked about yet on the show is one of my decanters must have been a wine decanter. I think it was a Waterford Crystal. It is a Waterford Crystal wine decanter. And it was my grandmother's. And um, I put a stave in it. And it fit when I first took it out of the package and put it in the decanter. (laughs) But as all of us know, physics, when wood gets wet... (laughs) It expands, <laughs> and the stave is sitting it literally in a liquid, uh, and now it won't come out. <laughs> and again, this is a family heirloom, yeah. so how I retrieve that from there, like, you have to be careful. if it was in one of these cheap decanters, I would be a little more heavy-handed as to how I would get it out. Now I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I do you, you can't really take a torch to it, like, you know, I right. guess you could, but... You could. I don't... I don't want to damage the decanter. Right. It's, I mean, it's a Waterford Crystal decanter. Those are, like, expensive, right? And it was not even that. It was a family heirloom. So, yeah. There's, so be careful when you... These staves that I'm ordering uh, come from Amazon. And I've actually been uh, super happy with them. And I can tell you which ones uh, they are, actually. Uh, I think I got to search for whiskey because I think the description doesn't um they call them four pack barrel aged in a bottle oak infusion spiral barrel aged whiskey rum wine wow that's like an aliexpress title right there wow um in it is called the the oak infusion spiral store is the manufacturer on the package it says barrel aged in a bottle you know what for our, our live stream you know, I may just put start putting links in the live stream to encourage people to tune into the live stream. So yeah. if you tune into the live stream, you get my links. That's what I did. Um, I of cool stuff, couple, couple right? Links in there too. Um, so it is for a four pack, sixteen dollars and ninety five cents uh, for four of these. Nice, and they work really, really well. And I find these don't get stuck. These uh, have a diameter that uh, will go in in most decanters. I haven't gotten any of these stuck. The one that's stuck is obviously a larger diameter uh, and got stuck in, in the decanter. So I'm, I'm digging it, man. Like, I, I want to get to the infinity barrel, Jim, that, that you have. But um, short of that, what I've been doing, I find works really, really well. Because, you know, we, every time we do a podcast here, we, we drink whiskey. And so if I start buying expensive whiskey, it, you know, our operating cost goes up significantly. <laughs> 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 so I have to find ways to manage yeah. our operating budget as, again, we just, we just took over this uh, studio on May 1st. Right. Um, and haven't even, I mean, other than my quick announcement at the top of this show, we haven't announced uh, even the name uh, Hacker Syndicate like up until this point. Wow. Because uh, we just took yeah, it over. Yeah. So uh, this you can see is the, the same Security Weekly studio that we're, we're making minor improvements on this uh, studio side. We're looking for more sponsors for... Uh, Stoey Geeks, uh, Jim. If you want to send me Threat Hunter AI things, things uh, we'll I'd get love them. To. 
Yeah, we'll put them here on on yeah. set. So you know, stickers, whatever, shirts, wearing the yeah. show, whatever. Um, so the, the benefit of the studios, you can get some branding uh, as well. And again, we're working on mm -hmm. you know, we got the telephone receptacle we're going to be putting in, awesome. and uh, we're working on the, the lighting too, because yeah. um, we inherited a, a lot of this lighting. So I'm still trying to uh, get it set, but uh, things have been you know, it's a it's a whole new journey. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new journey. <laughs> Love it. Which is awesome. I'll tell you, the last third of this Cypher 3311, mm -hmm. outstanding. Outstanding. You got, oh, you got yeah. So how is that? So, uh, Jim, you're smoking the, the Davidoff uh, Signature Perfecto, right? No, I moved Perfecto. on. I'm on the Ocean Breeze. Okay. Ocean, what was the Ocean Breeze? Lampert. Fill me in on that. Lampert, Lampert Ocean Breeze. Yep. Yes. So Can Lampert's a line I should, I should check out then. Yes. yes. You should yes. check out Lampert. Okay. I think I have one more of those Ocean Breeze in my humidor. But, you know, I, my usual, you know, my go-to every day is a Davidoff, uh, Davidoff Nicaragua box press. Mm. Yes, love mm. that cigar. That, for, for me, that's just love one that. of those constants, right? Yep. Uh, and then lately I've also been throwing in um, uh, uh, Placentia Fuego. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Robusto size. Yep. Um, and then occasionally a Drew Estate. I'm not as varied as, as you guys are. You know, uh, I probably smoke three per day, but I'm pretty narrow. You know, my collection is I may have a thousand cigars, which sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. No. Right? <laughs> Agreed. Uh, um, and it's pretty narrow, and so that's why I like to go to the the lounge, because at the lounge we have a lot more there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you can sample. And yeah, I can sample, um, and, it, and it's also beneficial that I'm I part own the lounge now. Um, mm. That's awesome. And so get to sample a lot of different, a wide variety of things. Clearly, not as much as Joe though. Oh, well, well, yeah, Jim, Joe, I've... Joe's very, very diversified in his cigar yeah. smoking. And I do, you know, in we got like roughly 12 minutes, although, I mean, it's our show, so we can we can do whatever we want, well, which is what I which is what I love now. <laughs> <laughs> this is our thing <laughs> and we can do whatever the hell we want. Uh, and it's our studio now, so we can do whatever the hell we want. This is like it's a glorious time right now. Like we can let's get at it. Two things, um, Jim. The record is five hours and forty six minutes for the longest Story Geeks <laughs> episode. It was the tequila episode where we actually ordered a pizza during the show because Paul and I were getting drunk side by each. As we oh my say god, here. holy and, crap! And, and, I was <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Drunk, probably the most <coughs> drunk I've yeah. ever been on a podcast. Yeah, that and was... that's I've done in the past twenty years, um, almost twenty years. I've been doing podcasts since two thousand five, um, and that's probably the most drunk I've ever been yeah. on a podcast. So if you go into our, our Stoey Geeks archive, you can find the tequila episode. Mm -hmm. oh. And fast forward to like the last thirty minutes. Yeah, and yeah that's yeah. the most drunk Paul has ever been on a podcast, <laughs> hands down. But Jim, I have a question for you. When you go do sampling, right? Like, like what's your process like? I, you know, because, you know, you, do you obviously you're a pot owner in a ska shop, so you get samples sent to you frequently who, mm -hmm. of people trying to get shelf space. Do you evaluate that or do you kind of like leave that out? Because Paul and I get shipments here as well as far as some sampling and stuff like that. Yeah. From, and from like I said, programs. we're welcoming more sampling. Like I understand we took mm -hmm. a we took a year off. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we welcome more sampling. So, Jim, over to you. What do you how do you sample? How do I sample? Well, <laughs> I'm again. I'm not the expert, right? Um, uh, so, a good example is three weeks ago, um, I got to try two different brands, which I won't mention their names, um, um, and found that uh, they were not to my liking. Sure. Um, they you can probably, say the brand, uh, Jim. You can say the brand name. You I, I brand. Uh, you have a, <laughs> look, believe me. <laughs> look, I, I'm, I'm not, and I'm the same way in all my podcasts, cybersecurity or cigars, right? In we can talk about things we don't like. It's our opinion. It doesn't mean it's a bad cigar. It doesn't right, mean right. it's a bad cybersecurity vendor or mm -hmm. or solution. We just, I, I like to number one, stick to the facts, and then if it's an opinion, call it an opinion. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for me. I tried right. this software. 
what didn't work for me. I tried the cigar, didn't work for me. Dude, totally so, fine. So, tell, so and our uh, listeners like that. They want to know our opinions, Jim. Uh, I I tend to look for lighter mm-hmm. um, cigars because I tend to to smoke more in the morning than I do in the evening, and mm-hmm. so I'm looking yeah, for something agreed. that is not so heavy. And um, uh, I also really enjoy, you know, like the David Off Perfectos, the shorts. I, I, yeah. I really enjoy smaller size cigars because then I can have actually more of them um, it, during the day, right? So uh, after this Zoom, I'll probably go outside, have a, a small short cigar outside, relax a little bit, and then come back in and go back to work, right? Um, so uh, m- my way of sampling is is I'll... I'll tend to lean towards the the lighter things and not try and grapple with, you know, those giant uh, Toros, uh, you know, the 60 gauge. um, Mm -hmm. And I have to be alone. This sounds weird, but I have to be alone. To figure it out without any noise around me, without any noise around me. I agree. When I when I'm reviewing cigars, I like to be alone, and not typically at my desk while I'm working. Right. Because then I'm then I'm distracted. Yeah. Right. Correct. I like and, and to be I, and if, and if late I'm late at night if I'm watching a movie and it's rare. Late at night I'm watching a movie in my office, it's rare. Um, but that's when I like to smoke cigar that I'm going to review. If I'm smoking something for attention. the first time, then I'm. I'm trying to figure out if I like it or if I want to buy more of it. It's hard for me uh, because others will have already tried it and will be giving me their opinions on it. And, oh, yeah, and, don't and do the that. flavors that, that they, yeah. they have and everything else. And, and to me, it's just kind of background noise that, that gets in the way of me figuring out whether or not my palate enjoys it, whether or not I enjoy those flavors or not. And, and it, it, the same goes with... When I'm trying new whiskeys, it's, it's the same thing. Mm. I, I have to try it by myself first, mm-hmm. without anyone else around. Um, figure out if I if I enjoy it or not. Yeah, because I had that old old Fitzgerald whiskey. Uh huh. And I'm not sure which one it is. And I still have the bottle. It's in my office at home. Um, so remind me. I just need to when I'm at my home office, turn around and take a picture of it. Um, actually. I probably have a picture of it, and I can tell you while I'm talking. Um, but I found that old Fitzgerald to have a very grassy hay flavor to it. Okay. That I did not enjoy. And I was excited to find a bottle of old Fitzgerald whiskey because it's a pretty well sought after bottle. You could probably tell me more about it, Jim. Well, I mean, the old Fitzgerald it, 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 is uh, where, oh, what, where does that come from? So. It really depends on which old Fitzgerald, right? You know, there's there's the mm-hmm. nine year, there's the ten year, there's the twelve year, and each year is, is going to be a different um, release of it, right? And so it depends on which year it was, which year it was released, and how old it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like this one right here. All right, I got it. I got it right here. It is. Uh... Bottled and bond. It's an eight year old Fitzgerald, eight years aged. Uh, it says fall of 2023, 100 proof, 50% uh-huh. alcohol is all it says on the outside of the bottle. So it's the eight year. So it's the eight year of 2023. Yep. Okay. I could see the, the grassy tones to it. Yes. Okay. I can, yeah. I can and see I just, that. In, in, it's funny in cigars. Oftentimes, some Davidoffs and Avo cigars will have that grassy flavor. We've talked about it on Stoy Geeks episodes in, in the past. And what I like to do is age those cigars a little bit so it's less of a grassy undertone because it tends to age out a little bit. And I come to appreciate them as something different. Maybe not something I smoke every day, but I like it. And a lot of people, when they have that grassy flavor in cigars, are like, I don't like it. I had not experienced that level of grassy flavor in a whiskey before, and I was like, "Wow!" So was that, was I like, that the very I really first don't pour like. Pour out of the bottle. It was a uh, very first pour out of the bottle. Okay, 
So sometimes what it also occurs is you get that f- that bottle funk, right? No, oh, is that a thing? Like like the uh, package. My my wife will say this. If I get, uh, we just did it. Uh, I think last night, uh, she had bought some uh, steak tips and some lamb, a rack of lamb, and uh, we got home and I'd rip open the packages to start seasoning them. Uh, and let them rest before I put them on. Actually, I put them on the Blackstone. I don't recommend you do the rack of lamb on the Blackstone. Mm-hmm. Everything else I put on the Blackstone has been amazing. Rack of lamb comes out way better over an open fire. Yeah. But when I open up the packages, I get that package funk. And she's like, that yeah. meat's bad. I'm like, I've now barbecued enough meat to know bad versus package funk. I'm like, that smell's going to mm-hmm. go away. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, just, I can just tell now. Like I, you, but you have to train your palate to do that. Right. And, but your palate seems like it's been trained with whiskey. That first opening of the bottle, you get that bot, like anything that's been sealed up airtight. Well, I don't know why. There's a scientific reason for it, obviously. Will it kind of have that kind of a funky smell and taste? Correct. Is that true with whiskey? Whiskey? I, I, I think so. Um, mm. You know, usually that, that first pour, you know, um, you should go back to that bottle and taste it again. Right. You know what's funny? Mm-hmm. I drank the whole bottle. I said I didn't like it, but I drank the whole <laughs> bottle. I shared it with family as well, but like I, I drank the whole bottle. And so the empty bottle is in my Wait, office. You, you drank it all in the same sitting? Not in the same sitting. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> over time. Over, I bought it uh, Christmas time. Actually, I could tell you exactly uh, the date. Uh, December 25th is when I cracked it open, uh, 2023. And the first, the first glass, I was like, I don't like it. Yeah. And then, but you're right. After... A, a couple of months and then it was gone the later glasses i'm like oh that's that's better because it didn't right. taste as grassy correct it's it sort of mm. smooths out a little bit the, it gets that air gets a little bit off it gets oxidized yeah. a little bit right um um i i would say that that like like the one i drank the other day uh this guy uh which is the fall 2018 release nine year you know it's got like half a bottle left um, when I first I want to know I want to know the story from two weeks ago because two weeks ago so Jim's on the west coast we record at twelve thirty so it's nine thirty in the morning for Jim mm-hmm. last week you were drinking whiskey this <laughs> this week now the, the the second incarnation of the rebooted Stogie Geeks you're not drinking whiskey is that because like you need to take a nap a couple weeks ago after that? <laughs> <laughs> no 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 never ever get kidney stones. Oh, oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> yeah. No bueno. Um, no bueno. Yeah. For sure. no, no bueno. And, no and, bueno. and I'm on meds right now. So mixing the meds with, with mm-hmm. alcohol. Although I, I do splurge and I shouldn't. And yeah. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that splurge for tonight rather than right oh, yeah. now. There you go. No, that makes, that makes total sense, Jim. Um, where I wanted to segue as we close out the show, and I want to table this uh, mm-hmm. for next time, but... I think it's a really cool thing to leave our listeners and you all collectively uh, with is that uh, I explain some of what's been happening with the studio, mm-hmm. right? So we basically now have a thousand square feet and uh, our, we've got a lot of stuff in here. One of the things that we have is a humidor mm-hmm. that I bought from the cigar lounge next door years ago. Um, so next door had bought these two giant cabinets. Jason, Joe, what would you say they're... Roughly four feet wide by seven seven feet tall, uh, double glass door, humidors. I estimate you could put 50 to 100 boxes in that humidor pretty easily. There's some drawers for singles Mm -hmm. as well. Uh, It's a pretty massive cabinet. Yeah, it's a beautiful humidor. Thank you. (laughs) And so um, it's it's travel. So you say we have to fill it. Yes. Yeah, but yes. so I'm, I'm just trying to give the background of the, the humidor, right? Because it came from the cigar lounge next door, and then there's a unit between this unit and the cigar lounge. It was there, and then it was in here in this unit, and then it was back over here. And then this weekend, we moved it back over here, where it's just like adjacent on, uh, on set. Yep. But um, given everything that's happened, so I have two cabinets at home mm-hmm. and one cabinet here. And just through, I'll spare you all the details. Uh, maybe I'll share some uh, on the next episode. Uh, the humidor is empty. Yes. Um, and because we smoked a lot of cigars on it, and then I consolidated uh, when we took a break for Stogie Geeks and the whole thing. So right now, that humidor is empty. Mm-hmm. How would we, how would you, what's your opinion? 
those on the show and those mm -hmm. listening, like, weigh in. Send us messages on social media or email on paul at stogiegeeks.com. Uh, Joe at stogiegeeks.com. Jason, I don't know, and Jim, I haven't created emails no. uh, for you guys yet. Um, but Joe and I have stogiegeeks.com emails. Send us some feedback. Um, well, how would you fill mm -hmm. a humidor that's empty right. that holds, I, I think my estimation is that you need at least 50 boxes to get it going. Because if you just put a couple of boxes in a giant cabinet like right. that, yeah, yeah. The, it, it's not going to hold the humidity very well. Like you need a good 25 to 50 boxes yeah. just to yeah. Yeah. kind of hold mm -hmm. uh, the humidity. So uh, before I do that, I've also got to wipe down the entire inside because it's been sitting empty in the, the humidity. I have to reseason it, yep. which means I got to wipe down the entire cabinet with a sponge with mm -hmm. uh, distilled water, right? And that's about a gallon. Mm -hmm. of distilled water really just to season it and get it going mm -hmm. again let it sit then put the cigars in it then probably another gallon of water to recharge mm -hmm. uh the beads which I, I gotta probably buy some more beads for it uh and it has um cigar oasis uh humidification system in it as well and so like how would you fill that but we're talking thousands of dollars uh to fill it right 25 to 50 boxes just to get you started is at least a couple thousand dollars just to fill that yeah, bad boy back up. Absolutely. Yep. So we're, uh, maybe we're accepting donations. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I was waiting for you to finish. You want to start a GoFundMe? Yeah. It sounds like a GoFundMe yeah. moment. We need a GoFundMe moment. And then, you know, maybe it's if you come down to the studio, you get to uh, pick some cigars out mm -hmm. of it and smoke it with us uh, kind of thing. We make it like a social thing. Yeah. Uh, if you're a GoFundMe and then you visit the studio, which, uh, <laughs> I would love to bring back visitors into sure. the studio again. 100%. The whole history is a long story, but pandemic played into that where we didn't have a lot of visitors in the studio, which is one reason why the, the humidor is empty. So, um, yeah. How would you fill? I want to hear from our listeners uh, as well. How would you fill 25 to 50 boxes mm -hmm. on like a budget too? I mean, yep. sure, we could fill it with 25 or 50 boxes of Padron or Davidoff, and we're talking about <laughs> more like five to 10 grand. Right. Uh, Fill it, but how do you how do you fill uh, a humidor like that now? Yeah. And I do I did order mm. a bunch of uh, I was using Holtz to order some yeah. uh, you know on sale cigars to help fill it, and there were other people who would store their cigars in there yeah. uh, as well. So you know you guys are more than welcome. Once it gets going, we can sure. uh, you know allocate space because yeah. uh, again, I to go from zero to right. fifty boxes is. A significant investment. So I'd love to hear from our listeners, and we'll talk about it next time uh, on the next episode, which is two weeks from now. Yep. We need a we need a collaborative like you know, they do with farms. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a big humidor, a dude. It is a big, big humidor. So. Do you, Do you have photos of it? Yeah. Well, we can. Yeah, take I'll send a you a photo. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll. Po you know what? I'll post a photo on social media. And and uh, we should do like a. Um, when people do fundraisers, they have that giant thermometer, you know? That yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Exactly. exactly. We exactly. have a cigar thermometer. <laughs> have we hit our limit yet? You're right. <laughs> still, not, still not full. Keep sending Keep cigars. Sending, Keep you know. sending. <laughs> yeah, so any, any lounges or any companies out there that want to... Maybe uh, we sell sponsorship in the humidor, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, humidor sponsorship. You want a section, you send us 10 boxes, and we'll there put you your, your there name you on there, Ooh, and we'll post pictures of it and talk about it on the show, right? 100%. I love it. Awesome. Well, that will conclude this episode of the Stoey Geek Show. Joe, Jason, and Jim, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been awesome. I'm so excited uh, that we're doing this show again and that uh, we managed to reboot it mm -hmm. uh, and, and yeah. keep it going. And every other Friday is, is a treat when we get to do this show. And I want to thank everyone for uh, listening and watching. And we'll see you next time on the Stoey Geek Show.